Did you know that Tor Dash? Like
here to go on to face. It is the last week of the Caps Gaming Showcase, and we cap stone it with a battle of the number one and number two seeds, arguably two of the three best teams in EU, handing off a best of seven series to them today. And these two teams are squaring off here. It's Havu Gaming versus HREDS right here on twitch.tv slash capitals. Good evening and welcome wherever you may be. However, you may be watching us. We appreciate you being here. My name is Nick DeMeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin. I'm joined alongside my very good friend, Brandon Bigsby, a.k.a. B Major and King Lime out today with an illness that is okay. We are here instead to bring you this best of seven action. And Brandon, this one should be a fun one. Oh, yeah. You always know it's going to be a fun time when Havu and H-Reds collide. And this time, it's not in week five in the regular season between two undefeated. No, 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 my friends. It's the finals. It is for everything that these two have played for all season. It's going to be a fun one to watch and cast with you, Nick. Yeah, it should absolutely be a fun one. We know these teams very well. We've covered them a lot of times uh, every single place they've been. And these are two teams that... Uh, travel globally to go to all sorts of events here. And when we talk about the prowess and and uh, ability of these EU players, uh, some would argue, you know, Frolunda would obviously be up there in the conversation. Uh, Granite making a run as well. IQ kind of clicking at the heels a little bit. But when it comes to this particular Caps Gaming Showcase, it's Havu and Atreids. Yeah, and I think you kind of said it there, Nick. It's kind of been the big three in the EU. You think of H-Reds and Frolunda and Havu, and then obviously you have some of those other teams like Granite or Goons or IQ that are kind of pushing to make it a big four. But yet here we are with Havu defeating Frolunda in a sweep last week, and or excuse me, two weeks ago rather, and on the other end, H-Reds just continuing their dominant form, sweeping really strong side in Granite Gaming as well. So these are two teams that have seen a lot of success all season season long both seven and one both number one and number two in the regular season and of course here they are in the finals playing for everything for a championship for the first nhl team backed championship in eu as well so this is going to be a lot of fun to see these two match up in the best of seven i do not doubt at all that's going to be a good one yeah it should be a good one let's take a look at the lineups real quick we'll start with havu as the number two seed here Brandon, walk us through kind of what you see here. We know the lineup very well, but what stands out to you as the star player for this best of seven series? I think it's got to be the captain and the centerman for Havu Gaming and Flyer Kungan. When he is on, he is just such a dangerous player to have to play against. And it's so interesting with him because I think he is not necessarily underratedly, but in my opinion, probably one of the best two-way players in all of the EU division. Just the way that he can impact the game offensively and give that scoring punch while still being so dominant defensively for his team. It's so, so key for Havu, especially in these series and games where we're playing so many star-studded wingers on the other end, like Villapueca, like Nicky Dangles, like Benito in the center at that forward spot. So he's going to be a big key for this Havu gaming team, and they're going to need him to be on if they want to win this series. On the other side, H-Reds. We know them extremely well, just off the heels of an amazing victory for them. And uh, here they go, stateside at least, uh, for the Washington Capitals and the Caps gaming movement here with this showcase season three. What stands out to you here? I think it's got to be Nicky Dangles, man. It just feels like whenever yeah. there's a finals, whenever there's a lot on the line, he is always the guy that steps up for his team and comes up with these big plays. He stepped up big time in the playoffs for this HRS team so far. He's the leader in points in the playoffs this season with a total of 27. Tied with Benito, his teammate at center, and Kroketsi from Goon. So, Nicky Dangle is a guy that always shows up in these big games. I expect to hear his name called a lot here tonight. Yeah, you talked about that, uh, the stat line there, leading scorer. We have leading points, or leading shots as well. And when we talk about that, that's obviously Villa Poika. Let's look at the team stats a little bit further here. And you can see kind of on paper, an evenly matched team uh, when you look both sides of the stat line. 
Yeah, and what's interesting to me is the goals against. I think that goals for, obviously, that does kind of tilt towards H-Reds, but the goals against, to me, is what is so huge. Havu with 18, H-Reds with 16. It kind of shows you that both of these teams have been capable of playing that shutdown defense, and so much for Havu, they've played 12 games. Well, five of them, they've shut out their opponents. So not only are they playing shutdown defense, but they're doing it in the style of blanking their opponent in almost 50% of the the playoff games that they have played so these are two teams that are dominant in just about every sense of the way i think what benefits havu though is that special teams you see the power play over 15 percent better and the penalty kill a little over 17 percent better so h reds a team that we know is a little bit adept to take penalties that special teams could be something to watch out for havu if you are looking for something to go in their advantage kind of staying in the realm of how these teams produce we look at the power play percentage and it's actually something i've seen h reds do a lot better in uh when they've played in all sorts of uh, events and conversations here but here just 22 percent havu gaming 37 percent both teams obviously taking some penalties as well in the playoffs up to this point that penalty kill might be the reason havu could squeak out a win here at least uh, on paper yeah, and you know, I have to agree with you, especially for the reason that we kind of mentioned, and that's that H-Reds, just with the way that they play, they are kind of known to take some penalties, unfortunately, and it's so interesting because with that power play, I was a little surprised to see it as low as it is. They usually are a team that's a really good scoring side, and on the power play, that kind of builds up even more, but just not as much success so far in this playoff run when they've had that man advantage. So we'll see if that improves. Age Reds, we know how they are when they get to the big stage. They look to elevate their game. They never think they're playing well enough. They always think they can improve on certain things when you talk to these guys. I know that that special teams is something they're really looking to kind of look towards that improvement on here in this game, especially against the Havu team that's known to capitalize on that front. And as we get you squared away, teams are about to get ready to search right now as we speak. want to remind you that if you like sixes action, uh, that's okay. We love sixes as well. Threes action just around the corner. We'll have more to talk about that as well if you want to do something kind of in between all these amazing sixes tournaments that we have going on literally everywhere right now, uh, especially with the the help of leaguegaming.com and our league gaming dynamic stat system you'll see that right above my head the series update you'll see stats fly through as we progress through here as these eu players look to take on each other right now and brandon if you were looking for the one player that's going to be the impact player for this series at least going into the seven games who do you have you know i i think that maybe this is a little bit of a cop out because it is a goaltender but Against a team like H-Reds, it's so big to have a goalie that steps up and makes those big plays. And I think that Sibelius is going to have to be the guy that really carries things forward for Havu Gaming. We know how good H-Reds is in these finals. We know how star-studded they are and how well they are when they can have those three forwards of Villapueca, Benito, and Nicky Dangles clicking. So to be able to have that ability to make those big saves, stop a few plays that normally Atrus would be able to capitalize on, I cannot stress enough how big that's going to be for Havu. It could be the difference between a 2-1 to -one loss or a 2-1 to -one win. So let's see what he does. I know Havu's going to be looking for him to step up, but this is the finals, Nick. Got to make those big-time plays and those big-time moments. We'll see who does it here tonight. Yes, we certainly will. We want to welcome everybody stateside and overseas. Twitch.tv slash Capitals. It is the finals here. The Caps Gaming Showcase presented to you by Lidos and powered by LeagueGaming.com. We will be following Havu Gaming going north on your screen, Atreds going south on your screen. And you'll see those player colors change as we go two games home, two games away. Atreds, the first ones here with uh, the home ice advantage, obviously being the number one seed here as the teams sync up. We'll have the game start here in just a moment. Uh, as we have a quick loss, we'll come right back to us here as we get everything reconnected, Brandon. And uh, the fault, I think in football, they'll call that a false start. So we'll take five yards, we'll pick up the flag and we'll reset the line of scrimmage to try that one more time. 
Yeah, first and 15, but just uh, gives us a little bit more time to kind of digest what we're about to see here. Number two, Havu, number one, H-Reds. And we were kind of talking about some of those big saves um, that Sibelius would need to make, Nick. Yeah. And I'd love to get your opinion on that against a team like H-Reds. I mean, how big do you think that is to be able to have a goaltender that can kind of pull the rabbit out of the hat a couple of times and save a goal or two against an h red side that we know when they are a team that has the momentum. It's like a full going trade. It's almost impossible to stop them. Not to take anything away from Sibelius by no means, but when you have a hole from a departure like a cafe a couple of seasons ago, and you come in and you have to fill those shoes, first of all, it puts a lot of uh, expectation on what you kind of have to do in order to step up and deliver for your team. And he's done so quite well. You look at arguably the best goalie in phase in EU on paper, they're exactly the same nine and three versus nine and two. Uh, they've saved almost the same amount of shots. They have the same GAA. So like Sibelius has done his part to get Havu into this run and Havu, you know, caught some wind here in the playoffs. And I, I firmly expected them to be in this finals on the other side of the bracket. And then it was just a matter of H reds versus for Lunda bringing them here. So when we talk about battle of the goalies, I always say this, it's the good goalies make the saves you're supposed to make. Uh, the great goalies are the ones who make the saves you're not supposed to make. And I think Sibelius does exactly that. Even inside of a virtual ice environment, he does quite well at kind of I don't know if it's foreshadowing or having the insight or the uh, fortune teller magic eight ball, but he's in those positions. He's made some spectacular saves through the playoffs so far. It's been fun to watch. Yeah, and at least to me personally, I think that Sibelius, when we talk about some of those elite goalies in EU, I think that he's a name that can be sometimes slighted a little bit in that conversation. You hear guys like Kape, you hear guys like FaZe, you even hear his goal, his goalie tandem partner in Hanzelino in that conversation a lot, but it's been Sibelius in net a lot for Havu, especially in this Caps gaming tournament, and he's been playing every game in the playoffs in this tournament for his team, and he's been nothing short of spectacular. We mentioned that stat earlier. Five shutouts in the playoffs out of 12 games. Well, that's not just a defense thing. That's a goaltending thing as well. We talked about a Sibelius. He's faced, let's see, a total of 91 shots this postseason. Yep. So to be able to get that amount of shutouts, that's three more than any other goalie in the playoffs this season. That's really impressive. And you have to remember, shutouts that's a goaltending based stat more times than not there are defensive lapses where you need your goalie to make that big save or so he's been able to do that for this team we'll have to see if he can do that against a team like h reds and in this moment but even when they matched up in week five both games were only decided by one goal yeah. so this is going to be really interesting and i think that he's a guy that could really step up for the top of gaming squad absolutely you look at the other side of the ice king of apes we talk about offensive firepower coming from the back from the back we no lime loves to talk about that vertical hockey he's made a mention to it once or twice with us here on the broadcast and king of ape stands out as the player from that side i know on the other side with h reds you have all-star players across the board you could fill an all-star team with five if not six of the players on h reds globally uh with villapoika benito and nikki dangles one of the former rookies of the year uh for his club but king of apes coming into tonight three goals 14 assists however he produces a lot more offense than what that stat line gives him credit for. Expect him to get down low uh, and really go D to D to D. I know he loves to do that with Domi, and that's going to be kind of the way they generate their offense from the backside for h -Reds. And they're not afraid to get into the greasy areas either. You'll see King of Apes come down the ice and kind of get below uh, the goal line and work from the corner. So maybe that is something that we'll see from h -Reds to counter what Havu likes to do, which is really try to keep the play outside and north. And, and that's what they love to do. They love to suffocate the middle of the ice. That That's not going to work against an h -Reds who will cycle the puck quite well. Yeah, and the thing with Atrets too is I think that's what makes this them so fun to watch is that they're so dynamic in the way that they attack offensively. It's not just the three forwards of Benito, Villapoika, and Nikki Dangles that will attack. It's the defensemen too. You'll see a lot of times that Domi and King of Apes, they will take the forward position and come up like a left winger or a yeah. right winger would, and the winger will just step back defensively, and it looks just as normal as it would with all three forwards doing it. They are just so dynamic, and they can throw so many different looks. They, 
they play with a lot of guile, I guess you could say, more of a soccer term, but just the <laughs> way that they play and the different ways they can attack you and the different looks they can throw at you, it's such a hard thing not to face against defensively. And you'll see guys like King of Apes and like Domi go up in the offensive play and they'll score some goals and create some offensive opportunities for the teams from that as well. As the players have searched and it looks like they're matching up right now, uh, you're absolutely right. And I like the mention of Guile, uh, despite who may not be familiar with that. Um, what's interesting here is these two clubs for EU play a, a very soccer-esque style uh, attack on the ice. So that's tough for teams to compete against when they're not used to playing like that. Obviously, these two teams are zero percent strangers to each other they may be new to some of our viewers here uh, on twitch.tv slash capitals but let me assure you these players know each other's brothers names that's how well they're familiar with each other right yeah and <laughs> i i love that they mend the finals and that's a big reason why and especially in the eu with these top teams they've played each other hundreds of times whether it be in regular season matchups or playoff matchups or maybe even just regular scrimmages remember these teams often practice against one another to work on their crafts these two squads are very very familiar some even being former teammates in the past and it's always so fun when these guys match up Havu and H-Reds uh, Havu obviously being one of the grandfathers of the EU history, winning so many championships, so much glory, and H-Reds kind of being the new kids on the block about a year ago and really seeing their ascendance just really skyrocket over the past six to nine months. So it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, not necessarily the old generation versus the new generation, but two of the best teams that Europe has to offer, and if you had to name an author to every chapter in the eu history well many of those chapters were written by players on havu yep. or h red so it makes it fun for a matchup like this to be met in the finals and for us to be casting a dick so it's going to be really interesting to watch these two in a best of seven and see who takes this now, i'm really excited as well you mentioned it right there and with somebody like a, a nikki dangles is kind of what you talked about is an h reds team that has come up and surprised people kind of when they first got on the scene. And Nikki Dangles has kind of been that face, despite the fact that Villapoyca and Benito both collectively can put up four to five points per game. Uh, that's just an all-star kid that just has a new vision for the way he sees things. And it ties in perfectly to how H-Reds plays their games quite well. Yeah, and something that I love about Age Reds too and Nicky Dangles, he kind of takes the same example is that they're always looking to improve. They've won the championships, they've beaten just about every team there is on the EU side, but yet nothing is ever good enough. They want to keep improving. Nick, you and me have heard them say this. <laughs> yeah. They don't like to lose. They like they hate losing <laughs> more than they love winning. If they go and lose, that is more disgusting to them than they are happy about winning a championship and you see that within them they want to improve they want to continue getting better and you've even seen that within Nicky Dangles a guy that started out as more of a offensive generator and a goal scorer he has turned himself into a really good two-way player that is as big of a threat defensively as he is offensively and that really is just an example of what embodies this H Reds team and what makes them so good. They're always looking to improve. They're never satisfied. They're never stagnant. They always want to do that one little thing that can make them better and make them that harder to beat. Yeah, King of Apes got to speak to him for, I mean, it was probably 45 minutes uh, just over a week ago. And just talking to him and him telling us not only, you know, yeah, Benito saying we hate losing more than we uh, like winning, but King of Apes going, okay, well, who's next? Who, he's, he's Goldberg. From 1999 WCW going, who's next? There's nobody left for us to beat. So they're going to go up here as a multi-time champion against a multi-time champion in Havu Gaming. And we're going to see who's next. Can Havu pull off the upset? I know h -Reds has had their number for quite some time. Uh, although they've traded back and forth a couple of series wins here and there. But when it comes to the hardware, when it comes to the money won, 15, 20, 25,000 euro uh, prize pools. It's been going to H Reds recently, and I think they would like to continue to do that here in this Caps Gaming Showcase. Yeah, and I think that you could maybe even debate, and I, I kind of said this here a couple of weeks ago when we covered Havu versus Forlanda. 
Havla maybe with a little bit of a something to prove. It's been a little bit since they have been able to have that championship glory for Lunda had their run where they were really taking home a lot of the European tournaments. And recently, it's been Hred seemingly taking home all of the gold and all of the euros in the last six to nine months. Well, for Havu, it's not like them usually for them to have this championship drought for over a nine to 12 month span. Yeah. I think they're looking to prove that we can still win a championship. It was almost getting to a point to where it was like, okay, it's going to be for Lunda and H-Reds in every single final. Well, Havu already took out one. They slept <laughs> for Lunda just in the semifinals. I don't think anything would do them any happier here in this tournament than to cap it off by taking out H-Reds as well and saying, hey, we are still a championship side. We can beat H-Reds even though they have gotten us the last few times. We'll see if they can do it right here, Nick, in game one of the Caps Gaming Showcase European Finals. All talk and no play makes Penguin a very very unhappy person no rhymes there just facts so now we finally get into the games here it is twitch.tv slash capitals and we are here as the teams sync up hopefully now for the final time as we begin game one in this best of seven for the caps gaming showcase presented to you by lightos powered by leaguegaming.com the leaguegaming.com dynamic stat system that you'll find at the top of your screen no ticker tonight as we just have one matchup to show you however the matchup is right here. Havu Gaming going north on your screen. White jerseys, black pants, green trim, ha uh, H reds there in those all red. The line of red we talk about. As the faceoff there was won by Havu to open things up. And we begin play here in this best of seven. H reds now with the first offensive flurry. That one's broken up in the middle of the ice. And the left side shot taken there, and that one hit off the side of the cage by Villapoika. Somebody to watch there will be Villapoika. We talk about IRL injuries. Well, this one is an internet issue, and hopefully he's resolved that here as he's got the puck on his stick. Wraps that around to Benito behind the net. He's rubbed off the puck. And it's brought up the left side. Nasu Stelia up to Eagleson. Eagleson just dances and dinks his way around. Two would-be defenders. That turns into an offender there as far as Nicky Dangles is concerned as he tried to get something going for H-Reds. Early on here, a little bit of a chess match. Some would say it's to be expected as that wrist shot, not a lot on it, floated up into the air and FaZe makes his first save of the game. I like that though for Havu. Get that first high danger shot and get an offensive chance to get to the zone early. I like that. If you can draw first blood, maybe gives you a little bit of momentum going into the series. Face off to the right of FaZe here. That's one back by Havu. They'll start off here, but lose it at the half boards. Nikki Dangles, two-way hockey coach. Vis-a-vis -vis Charlie Conway. We'll keep an eye on him and what he can do for his club. There's a chance here now. Stolen from behind the net. Dominointi with a good block there to break up that offensive attack from none other than King of Apes. Domi will start this out now from his end and move it up. That's staved along. Right side, Nikki Dangles. Back to Domi. Domi fed in front. Good chance. Bounced off the pads there of Sibelius. And we'll start this one out. Center ice, turning around to slow things down. And that's something you'll see a lot with, especially these upper echelon teams, both EA and NU, and NA and EU, uh, is that, oh, here, chance here, Nikki Dangles, two on one, is a good poke check. Nasu Stelia able to make that save. I was saying, we get another chance here, that's fed in front, pushed along, deflected to the right side. Dominointi, puck on his stick just briefly, Benito will make the steal. Both the top teams on both sides of these divisions know to reset. Don't force the play as a shot comes in there. And Sibelius goes butterfly, makes the save. Couple of sticks broke that one up as well. Good effort. Fed along now. Yeagleson, backhand chance. Couldn't pull the trigger. Good back checking there and a bit of a rushed play up the ice by Havu Gaming as we've approached the 12 minute marker gone here in the first period. No score. Couple of scoring chances. Less in shots as well, but that should pick up as things progress here through these seven games if necessary. We'll at least see four. Nikki Dangles, right side, Villapoika. Puts that out to his outside. Try to bring that one towards the middle. He was pushed aside as that one got through traffic. Good save by Sibelius. Nito stops things short there. Fires it on net. And it's just brushed along. Behind the net now, that was Flyer Kungen. Working at the Nasu Stelia. Lots of speed up the left side. Tries to saucer past that one to his wing partner in Eagleson, but they couldn't connect a little bit out of sync on that one. No Backstreet Boys, at least. That one's fed over to Flyer Kungen. 
He'll find it to a stick instead. That was looking for uh, H-Red's player. But instead, it found Havu Gaming. They'll do the back and forth once more. We'll see that a lot between these two clubs for sure. Looking for good chances. And that was another one. Broken up. Slap shot comes in. Blocked by Eagleson. Eagleson getting in front of the pucks right now at the best opportune chances. That one was fed along. That was deflected out. Now stolen Villapoyka chance. Can't find that one on net. Neither can that one go. Good defense here. Havu Gaming standing tall right now. Benito still with the attack, though. The pressure is mounting. they got to get this one out. King of Apes controlling things from the left point. Now right point, Domi. Villapoika down low. In front, chance! And that's Benito with a good save by Sibelius. Under a minute here, and Havu looking to really slow it down and clear this puck out. Good scoring opportunity there from Atreds. Benito back in. One last chance. Bumped off. King of Apes throwing one on net. Won't make it through. And that's going to do it for the first period. No score, but Atreds. Cooking a little bit of grease here. Late in the first period, they go into the locker room, 0-0. And it was a pretty back and forth first period for the most part, but that last five minutes or so, it felt like H-Reds really had the momentum. I think you used the term perfectly there. Cooking with grease was the team in red there in the end of the first few minutes. Sibelius so having to make a few key saves there in the last couple minutes, and you can see it on your screen. Six shots. Three minutes and 12 seconds of time on attack. A lot of that came in within that last five minutes or so there for h -Reds. A great end of the first period that had really been back and forth where neither team seemed to really seize that momentum. h -Reds seemed to really have that advantage now going into the second period, I'd say. As we see there, shots 6-1, as you mentioned there. h -Reds really got hot late in that period. So we'll see what they can do and if they can continue that momentum here in period number two. Face off there won by h -Reds, but That was met quickly by a Havu player. Center ice will be the name of the game here as these two teams look to try to break through as much as they can. That goes offside at 17.59 left here in the second period. Want to welcome everybody. Twitch.tv slash Capitals. You'll see the gaming dynamics that system at the top of your screen. Brandon B. Major Bigsby. Nick F5. Penguin DeMeo in for the ride with you for this best of seven. It's Vili Kung. Sets this one over to Nasu Stelia. They'll play D to D hockey just for a moment. And they'll start up the ice. That found the stick of Dominointi through the zone. They're in the attacking end now. That is a lot of a costing there from H-Reds as they broke that play up. And their end around pass to a left defenseman. And Dalmi finds his way all the way back up to his end. He tried the Omaha clap around. That's brought in by Havu. Kept in the zone. That's flipped on net. In front, he scores. So not the prettiest goal here. But from the Omaha block, Havu Gaming gets the first one of the series. And it's 1-0. Well, you know what they say, Nick. They don't ask how. They ask how many. And it's Flyer Kungen getting the scoring start there for Havu. Great play. Just getting the puck on net. Took that fortunate bounce there for Havu. Like you said, it might not have been pretty, but it's going to count on the scoreboard for a lead. As a shot there from H-Reds. Another one coming in. Slap shot doesn't get through. The first one did, though. As they're going to look to rebound here. Expect H-Reds to turn it up just a little bit. They can turn on and off the gas as they need to, and they will do that. King of Apes, left side. Good poke check there by Eagleson. He'll throw it behind the net, allow the teams to reset. Nine gone so far here in the second period. Opening goal by Flyer Kungen. As they move it up for Havu Gaming. So Domi takes it from the corner. Flips it along. Bank pass up the right side. Villapoika. Villapoika. Oh, in front chance to Nikki Dangles. We talked about it. That one came through Benito. And we have a tie game. 
And that is exactly what Ahrefs needed right there to get themselves right back in it in terms of the momentum. We saw Havu score one. It wasn't the prettiest, but they got it through. This time, a little bit of a cleaner goal, but for the benefit of Ahrefs. And who else to score right there, Nick? A great play there for Ahrefs to tie this up. As Nicky Dangles gets Ahrefs' first goal of the game. First goal of the series, and we should see more now. 1-1. One, one. That was a good answer. By Atreds here midway through the second period. Benito's going to try to take that through again. But it'll meet Dominointi's stick. And that'll be floated along. Eagleson from the corner. He'll lose that one. Two on two. Back on the counterattack. Slow and methodical through the neutral zone. Villapoika is. The puck found his stick twice. And the play got broken up. On the right side of your screen. Hreds heading south. Havu Gaming going north. Villapoika will try again. Right side. Bounced in. And that found it all the way to Flyer Kunga. Who got the opening goal of the game by a weird turnabout. The turnabout is fair play. Sent along the boards. Quick 1-2 pass. That had to be slowed down and... Reset, but now Atreds keeps it in the zone. Benito, backhand pass. Found all the way to Nasu Stelia. He'll recover that behind the net. Good work there defensively, Brandon. D to D to slow things down. Now a lot of speed through the neutral zone. Dominointi trying to fire that one over to Flyer Kung and couldn't connect. Good work there by the Atreds defense. After they kept that puck in. King of Apes now. Left point. Fakes the slap shot. He likes to do that down low. Rebound. Chance. He scores. Off of Nasu Stelia. Bounced out to Nikki Dangles. And it's 2-1. Now Atreds with all the momentum on their side. And Nikki Dangles scoring on that rebound goal. And Nikki kind of alluded to it. But this just shows you how Atreds can really turn things on his head. It looked like Havu was going to be able to enter the zone on the offensive end. But what do Atreds do? They turn great defense in the great offense. They cause the turnover, go in on the other end, and just put the puck on that. And Nicky Dangles capitalizes off of that bounce and makes it a 2-1 lead for his home team in Atreds. Good work there by forcing that play on. And that was just a lot of continual pressure. Puck bounced off Anasu of Steli and just kind of trickled its way over to Nicky Dangles' stick. And he had the wherewithal to flip up on the stick at the right time, get that one past Sibelius. Final five seconds here. They'll try to one more rush up the ice. Nikki Dangles will meet them at the corner, but a penalty coming up here. Eight threads through the power play and enough time here to get something going. When well, they've drawn more penalties than anyone in these playoffs, and they've done it by a good margin. 36 power play attempts. We talked about that they struggled on that power play so far. We'll see if they can maybe break things open here in the end of the second period or the beginning of the third to really open this lead up. Love to see those animated graphics come in from EA when they do. I love it. As that got tied up there, and I believe that was Domi who tried to drive that lane to put a shot on. Doesn't matter. Two goals in a row by Nikki Dangles, one by Flyer Kung, and makes this one a 2-1 game for H-Reds going into the third. And I think that's exactly what H-Reds was looking for, to just be able to get back in this lead. And obviously the first goal of the game that Havu got a little bit unfortunate for H-Reds, but they just kept going. They kept doing what they were doing. They were playing well, just an unfortunate break. And what the best teams do is they don't let those tough breaks get the best of them. They don't let it impact the rest of the game. They moved on, went to the next play, and scored about five or six minutes later to tie it up. And then not too long after, you see Nicky Dangles with the puck on his stick on that bounce. Got it, put it in, and Atreds all of a sudden with a 2-1 lead and a power play going into this third period. Power play to That's start the third. Fresh sheet of ice, Brandon. I know they love that. Only two shots for Havu through two periods. One of those a goal. I got to do something more, right? Yeah, I'd have to say I agree with you there. And I think the big thing is getting out of the zone and getting into their own, or excuse me, into the offensive zone. Is it feels like Atres, they've really hemmed them in at their own blue line. It's been a struggle, not just getting into the offensive zone, but even getting past their own defensive zone. It's Atres doing such a good job, not just with that red wall that we always talk about, but even forechecking a little bit, forcing the issue of the defenders at the breakout, at the point of attack. We'll see if Havu can find the answers for that, but they have got to find a way to get some offensive pressure. Third period underway here. Another draw for H-Reds. Now a five on three. 
50 seconds for H-Reds to do what H-Reds can do offensively here. And this is not looking good for Havu, at least in the early start of period number three. Yeah, Nick, and we <laughs> talked about in the open how it was a little bit of a struggle on the power play for H-Reds at that 22%, but you don't want to give them a five on three. They're a talented side with a lot of offensive prowess to them. You give them that open space and an odd man advantage. That is not good. Not good, and they tuck it in there just driving and accosting the defense. And I believe that was Vili Kung. Either way, two H-Reds players off the draw just barreling down to Sibelius and they get the power play goal. It's 3-1 now for H-Reds. And that's huge there for H-Reds with a two goal lead and another power play to boot. Villapoico with his 11th on the season in the playoffs right there. Absolutely huge for H-Reds, a two goal lead. And really with the way they're playing, it's hard to not see them see this through. But you never know this Havu team, we've seen them get things going late before. They're gonna have to do it again here in this third. Going to have to do it again. We'll see what they can do. But now there's about a minute 20 on the power play. They just took six seconds for that five on three to oh, net them a goal as Eagleson takes a huge hit there from the corner. Benito trying to get his team back in the zone. They will. Eagleson back now on the defense. One time chance for Sibelius. He reads it the whole way. Good save by the goalkeeper who just let two in back to back. And Sibelius is going to have to be near perfect here for the rest of this game for Havu to have a chance to get back into this. And it all starts with this penalty kill. As you can see, just a few seconds left. Got to kill this off, get the 5-on-5, five five, and then get to work offensively to try and tie it up. Working down low, Domi again. Ten more seconds left on this man advantage. In front, Villapoika shot hits a body in front. I believe that was Flyer Kungin. Man out of the box, and Nasustelia trying to get it out of the zone. Down by two, 16 to go here in the third period. They finally get their legs under them. Move the puck up the ice. Here comes Havu Gaming. Havu met for the blue line there. Villapoika on the counterattack. That one's broken up nicely. <clears throat> and offsides here, our first offsides by Havu Gaming at 15, 18 to go here in the third period. Yeah, and I think that that stat you just mentioned, Nick, that really goes to show how stout h -Rents has been defensively. We talked about the struggles for Havu to get into the offensive zone, and Aparta has just been their struggles to get into the neutral zone. You can tell h -Rents, they are all over, not necessarily playing that all five back style, but they're forechecking a little bit too, causing turnovers at Havu's own blue line. You can see that aggressiveness a little bit right there in their attack. Eagleson will start this one along the offensive zone for Havu game, and they haven't had much time here. They try to establish something down by two midway through the third period. Good feed in front. That's a chance there from Dominointi at the doorstep. And they couldn't get that one past phase. Dominointi sent that one through. Eagleson had a step but lost it. As that fell over to the King of Apes who broke that play up. Self-pass in front, led up there. That was Villapoika trying to get something going with some speed. And Dominointi will take that one through center. Billy Coombe. Right point, shot in, good chance. Not a lot on it. Faye's able to see it the whole way, pushed it to the left corner. Havu not doing their typical cycling that they typically like to do, as that's been shut down effectively by eight treads in the defensive end of their ice so far. Under 10 to play here in the third period. 3-1, eight treads, game number one. Twitch.tv slash capitals. <clears throat> King of Apes to Domi. Villapoika coming up to help his team out. Backhand shot, that goes wide. King of Apes, turnaround chance, that's blocked by Eagleson. Eagleson with speed up the left side of the ice. Here he comes, stops and goes to the left circle. Behind the back pass, found its way to Benito instead. That'll be taken out of the zone cleanly. Left side, Benito. Back on the attack once more. Fed in front, chance for Benito. That one went wide. Time running down right now for H -Reds, or for Havu Gaming as H-Reds looks to increase their lead to three to put the dagger in this game in this best of seven. Havu, and you notice that wall of red that we talk about so much happening right here, Brandon. That wall of red hard to break through when you are H-Reds. Yeah, and this type of game, the way this is going, it, it helps H-Reds out having that two-goal lead. And that's why we mentioned it being so big for them to get that third goal on the stick of Villapoika. It just kind of 
alienates a little bit the offensive end on the other end because you're trying so hard to break through. You know you have to score, but Hred's so good defensively and so hard to get past again to the offensive zone. It makes it difficult to get back into a game, especially with time being on their side. So it just benefits Hred to have that type of lead, let that time diminish, and really just let that defense work for itself. As you saw there, a draw. Penalty on Hred's here. It looks like interference behind the net. That was some... Uh, haberdashery happening right there. They'll call it tripping, but I'll call it a costing as this is a chance for Havu Gaming to get back into this game. Plenty of time left on the clock here. Three minutes. Two of them will be on a power play if no goal is scored. They got to get one here. Face off one back by H Reds. Nikki Dangles playing defense right now. Clears that out. Falls to Nasu Stelia. Trickles in up front to phase, but that'll be scooped out of the zone and flipped along for Villapoika. Dangles his way along and poke checks it forward. Just trying to kill some time on this power play opportunity for Havu Gaming. 45 gone so far in said power play. Eagleson, too hard of a pass, can't collect that one was Nasu Stelia. Nikki Dangles slow thing down and brings it all the way back and flips it out. Gotta go back the whole way up the ice again for Havu Gaming. They'll flip it in and try their way on the right side. Couple of bounces, finds its way to Villa Poika stick, now Nikki Dangles. Nasu Stelia's got it though. Tries to pull up, fires one on, can't get a lot on it. That one's blocked before it hit the net. Final minute here. Nikki Dangles on a breakaway. Forehand shot. Good save there by Sibelius. Under a minute left to play here. Back to full strength hockey. Giving chase there. It's Flyer Kungen. Working with Eagleson. 42 seconds. Time running down now for Havu. Nasu Stelia keeps it in the zone. Good move there. Trying to fed that one back to Flyer Kungen. Can't get there. Eagleson tried to fire one on as well. That one fell short. Villapoika just taking it down low. Going to buy some time. Kill some time. Wind down this clock. Nikki Dangles makes sure he's going to try to dance one in. And Nikki Dangles tried to do what his name said. As the extra man is out now. Or trying to get out at least. But Villapoika sends it back in the zone. Dozen seconds left here. Winding down. Final 10. Nikki Dangles tried to... <laughs> through the back. Or behind the back. No look shot. Didn't happen, but nevertheless, Nikki Dangles with a little bit of flash here. Two goals on the game and wins this one with H Reds taking this one three to one. An impressive win there for H Reds and most of their work done in the second period with those two goals after the opening goal from Havu, a clunky goal nevertheless, but like we mentioned, Nick, Hrez just not stopping, not letting that get them down, not focusing too much on the negative and just moving on, staying mentally at the task at hand. They do so here. They get the two goals, get the third in the last period there to really close things out. And as you can see on the top right of your screen, Hrez start the series out with a 3-1 win and a 1-0 series lead. You got to talk about the All-Stars. We talk about them all the time. Nikki Dangles, player of the game, I think, when you talk about two goals with those being response goals after a uh, weird goal from Flyer Kungen for Havu Gaming, right? Yeah, and I think that's one of the things we talk about it with H Reds, and a lot of times you can see teams and players get frustrated at those kinds of goals. And I, I go back to the interview we did with K Cut last week on Scary Hours when they won the NA side of this tournament. And the first thing he said is that this game it's mentally taxing. But bad goals are going to go in. You're going to have some bounces not go your way. You just have to focus at what's at hand. Control what you can control and just try to go get the next one. And we saw Hres do that right there. An unfortunate goal to open the series out goes against them. But they did not let that stop them. They did not focus too much on that negative. They moved on the ne to the next play. Focused on the tax at task at hand. And ended up going in getting the next three goals. And Havu didn't score again. And they win this game 3-1 to one because of it. Yeah, what a response there by H-Reds. When they go down by one, it's never a good thing for the other team. You never want to be that team that just gets one on H-Reds and then doesn't follow up with another one. We talk about Sibelius. Played pretty decently uh, and really just got beat by some great goals. I think he played well enough to keep his team in the game, but then you need to get your offense scoring. You're not going to typically win a game by scoring one goal against H-Reds. Yeah, and you know, it's something that I actually say a lot, but if you always score one goal and you're asking to win by a shutout, so it's one of those things to where you can't expect perfection from your defense in order to win a game. It's really hard to maintain that, especially against 
a team like HRS that is so good defensively on their own end and can also contribute a little bit offensively. And I think you mentioned that Nick Nicky Dangle was probably star number one of this game. Two goals, one assist in that game. And he had a little bit of flair in there in the third period as well. So really interesting to see how that game played out and have to credit HRS for the way they played, especially after that clunky goal went in the start. Abu Gaming knocking on the doorstep, though, had a couple of chances. Good saves by FaZe and a great defensive effort by Delmi and King of Apes as they walked to this lead for game one. We'll get you out to game two in just a second, but however, we have some information for you when it comes to threes. We love threes. You love threes. Lime likes threes. And Brandon has stuff to tell you about threes. That is right. We are not done here at the Caps Gaming Show, or excuse me, the Caps Gaming Tournament. We go from sixes to threes. The threes challenge on both Xbox One and Xbox Series X slash S presented by McDonald's Gaming DMV. There's 32 total spots where we will see the best teams face off to see who is the number one threes team on both the Xbox One and Xbox Series X. And as you want to sign up for your respective console or find out more information about this tournament, make sure you sign up at www.rivalgames.com slash tournament. As you can see right there, a $1,500 prize pool for both sides. And we're going to be doing this through a single weekend for each side. And Nick, we're only a week away here for the Xbox One side. So not a lot of time and not a lot of spots left. So make sure you sign up www.rivalgames.com slash tournaments to get your team in or to find out more information. We will be covering that right here at twitch.tv slash capitals. And Nick, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch some of the best three teams face off against one another. Certainly will be as we have two of the best teams facing off right now. Teams have matched up. We're going to get you back down to ice level in just a moment here as we look at this matchup. Game number two underway in just moments. Who's got to step up for you for Havu so that they can walk away to split this series one game apiece going into game three? I think it has to be all three forwards for this Havu gaming team. And we kind of talked about it only scoring one goal. You're not going to beat many teams that way, but especially not a team like HRS that normally is going to put in three or four the majority of the games that they play. It's so tough when you're in that battle against them when they have that big red wall at the blue line that's so hard to get past. But it's even tougher when they're four checking and they're aggressive and they're in your face and they beat you at the point of attack on the breakout. So Havu gonna have to find some ways to get past that, have to find some ways to get something going for themselves offensively, because if not, they could be in for a long series. Your h red so, so good at capitalizing at mistakes and not allowing their opponent to get past them. Could be a long series or a short series, depending on who you ask. But nevertheless, yeah. we are here. Game two underway in just moments. We're glad you're here. Nice to have you there. Twitch.tv slash Capitals Caps Gaming Showcase. It's the EU Finals presented to you by Lighthouse. Powered by LeagueGaming.com. You see the series at the top left of your screen now. one nothing for H-Reds as Havu starts off this one. Jerseys are the same. Players are the same. Same great taste, some would say, but Dominointi with a bad taste in his mouth following that one game, uh, game one loss, three to one, as they got the opening goal from Flyer Kungen and not much more there. Villa Poika looking to put the stamp on this one early and that chance was denied. Behind the net play here, slowing things down again. That's what they like to do, Nasuseli and Villa Kung, making sure the four checkers don't get their way. Two on three coming into the zone now, three on two rather. Backhand chance, rebound chance, he scores. Good effort there by Dominointi as they poured the pressure on. A backhand rebound falls to his skates and stick, and it's 1-0 for Havu. And that is exactly what Havu needed right there, and it wasn't a clunky goal. It was a clean play there from Havu Gaming to start the scoring out, and with how that game one went with them not being able to get into the zone, not being able to establish a lot offensively, the first thing they do in game two, they get into the zone, get some chances, and capitalize to get past phase. A huge goal for the chances of Havu Gaming, not just in this game two, but maybe in this series. As you mentioned, yeah, this is a great response for them, and maybe this uh, slowing it down from behind the net and driving forward gets all the forwards moving, and that's how Yeagleson has had some success at the left side of the ice so far through 1.2 games. I don't know what percentage you'll put on. Uh, five minutes of a 60-minute hockey game, and math involved there, and it's not my strong suit. So Dominointi here 
looking to get things going and maybe get a 2-0 lead early on here in the first period against H-Reds. As they come offside here, first time H-Reds been offside all series as well. 14.35 to go here in the first period. Well, we're a game through. There's 60 minutes in this game, so maybe a game in six sixtieths? Is that, that what we're going with? That hurts my head. Fractions? <laughs> Worse than decimals. I, I can't. Uh, Lowest common denominator was... I, no, we're not here for that. We're here for virtual hockey on the ice right now. Good shot in way outside, though. Looking for a rebound was Nikki Dangles. Sibelius makes that save. Something weird happened there. Stolen by Benito. King of Apes driving in late. One-time chance he scores. Villa Poiko with a laser off the turnover by Nasu Stelia. And Adres has tied this up at one. Hreds doing what we talked about that they did in game one yet again here in game two just the ability to respond Villapoika coming right back in a beautiful one team the bottle flying off all kinds of physics after that shot from the Gatorade bottle but an absolutely beautiful set play to get Villapoika on that one timer and right when Havu thought they had Hreds where they want them Hreds finds a way to respond to tie this up Villapoika in the perfect spot there after that turnover, Nasu Stelia, I think he was trying to go behind his back and then make the pass over to, to Vili Kung, but Benito stole that, got it up to King of Apes, and he'll get credited with yet another assist from the right defenseman MVP from H-Reds. Now it's back tied. Nine gone in the first period, already two goals. Stop and go here, good chance, traffic in front, poking at it, and FaZe comes up with the puck and slows it down. Yeah, and Havu, you see they're wasting no time to try to get that lead back. They let that goal in, but that's okay. They say they're going to try to go right back in and get that lead right back. A nice offensive attack and a chance on the zone faceoff here. Good movement here by H-Reds to recover after that lost faceoff play. Villapoika sidestepping that defensive move. Shot on, hits just the pad there of Sibelius. He's still in position to make that save and does. In front chance, stolen. Good move there by Flyer Kungen. Stepping up into that lane and just robbing the puck away from Atreds. That pass errantly found its way all the way down the ice. It's going to be icing here. 7.56 to go in the first. Yeah, and you know, Nick, I know we're only about 12 minutes into this game one, but I think you have to credit Havu with the way that they're playing. You can tell the offensive attack a lot more dynamic, a lot more success in game two compared to game one. Nasu Stelia just doing it himself through the neutral zone. Got in the zone. Setting up shop now. Eagleson. Left side working. Nasu Stelia give and go. Good lane in for Dominointi. Shot off the mask of phase. And now a pass off the back of the cage. Finally slows down to King of Apes. That one's pushed along for Villapoika. Villapoika with a chance. And that one rang off the post and a pad. Pushed along the boards now is Dominointi. Now Vili Kung fighting for the puck. He's got it. A couple of poke checks won't come up with the puck, and that's going to be out of the zone by Havu. Dominointi passed it off a skate of Domi. Back to his stick, and he gets drilled there right in the slot area. Three on two the other way. Nasus Elliott back on the back check. Slap shot there just hits the glass behind Sibelius. Three left here in the first period. Kept in by King of Apes. Leaves that one over to Domi. Dominointi giving chase here. Trying to get this puck back. Another wraparound found King of Apes again. He'll play this one down low instead. Nikki Dangle stops and goes. Nice movement around. It's Villapoika. Had it there but couldn't pull the trigger. Chance in now. It was stolen quickly. Under a minute to go here. In period number one. Game number two. Domi trying to get this in the zone. He can't. Nikki Dangles will try. Stolen by Eagleson. Fed up and through. And that one's broken up. And drawing a penalty here late in the first period. Habu Gaming goes on the power play. This could be big. Yeah, and we talked about it in the pregame, Nick, how that power play was going to be huge for Havu if they want to win this game. An HRS team that does not have many weaknesses, but they do have that ability to take some penalties with the way they play. So Havu going to have to capitalize on these chances. We'll see if they do here for the first time here in game two. They couldn't do it in game one. We'll see if they can do things here in game two, but eight treads will make sure at least a couple of seconds come off the clock as we go into the locker room. End of one of game number two. It's 1-1 with an amazing one-timer goal from Villapoika. 
Yeah, and we have not been shorted of action here in this game too, Nick. We saw the scoring get started early from Havu, and just a few minutes later, that play you see on your screen, the one-timer to Villapueca to tie this thing right back up here for H Reds. And just look at that play again. Look at the passing, and you can see right there at the point, guess who they gave it to? And you talked about his name earlier, Nick. King of Apes. He is the guy that can really step up offensively for this HRS team, as you mentioned. He did so right there with the primary assist to set up Philip Wick on that goal, but nevertheless, a very even game. Time on attack a little bit more leaning towards HRS, but everything else pretty even between these two teams, I would say, especially in the shots. Only one separating the two just a little bit favored towards Havu. Big difference for Havu. Five shots through period number one of game two. One shot through one period in game number one. So if they want to have success, they got to shoot. Yeah, and that's actually one less shot than what they had in all of game one, just six total shots in the entirety of the first game. So Havu well on the better track here offensively. We mentioned in the first period, you can see it's paying off for them here. So and you far. know I'm going to say it here, Brandon, period number two underway is my very, very good, not friend, but would like him to be uh, friend. Lil John once said on an Emmy nominated when winning a song, shots, 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 everybody. And that's what Havu Gaming has to do. Thank you. I'll be here at least for the duration of this broadcast. Dominointi, power play opportunity here for Havu. 45 seconds left on the clock for that. Nasustelia in down low. Right side, Billy Kuhn. He's in front, chance. Second half burn in phase. Hangs on for the save. Couple of seconds left here on this power play. And you know, we haven't called FaZe's name too many times for some big saves, but that was a big one right there for this HRS team trying to hold on this penalty kill with seven seconds left. Nikki Dangles will flip this out successfully, kills off the penalty. And Havu now 0 for 2 on the power play through two games so far. Here comes Dominointi with a chance. That was a leading pass. Up for Flyer Kungen. Villapoik on the counterattack. He's going to feed that one to Benito. Found Benito stick. Fired that shot on. Sibelius made a save. Turnaround chance. Sibelius again coming up big here. That's poked out. Eagleson's going to chase this one down. And there's Domi getting to it first. H Reds. Methodical through the neutral zone. Flyer Kungen trying to disrupt that defensive structure that H Reds does so well. Flip that in deep. Good chance back out front. That was Dominoiti. And he was tied up in the slot area. Banked off the boards now. Villapoika back the other way. Two on two. Looking to feed that one up. Can't get there. Good poke check here. Nasu Stelia. Billy Kuhn both going to work here defensively. Domi with a shot. That's blocked. And flipped up to the left side of the ice. King of Apes finds his way out of the zone. As he'll meet his defensive partner in Domi. Taking it back through up for Benito. Benito left that one there at the half boards. Who's there to find it? That was Eagleson as they go offside midway through game number two. You know, Nick, halfway point through this game, and this kind of feels like a game where you really don't know who's going to take it. Both teams are playing pretty well, and Havu, with them playing a little bit stronger offensively, you really wonder if they can maybe break this thing open and really seize the momentum in the series. We'll see who can maybe get this next goal, but this next one could be really, really big for either of these two sides. This play continues along here. Nine minutes left here in the second period. Left corner. It's Flyer Kungen drawing another penalty, it looks like, on H Reds. Extra man out. Nasu Stelia, one time chance over for Vili Kung. And it doesn't get on past the net. Interference is your call. And another chance for Havu to capitalize on the extra man. And you know, we talked about the open, how the special teams could play as an advantage for Havu in the series. Well, so far, it's really been the other way. H Reds have had the advantage. They scored a power play goal in game one and have killed off every penalty that they've taken so far. So Havu going to look to even that up and maybe get one here to take the lead on the power plays. They haven't been able to take advantage so far. So Havu once again gets to try their hand on the power play. 
King of Apes makes sure that time winds down quickly as he flips it along. Finally in, Dominointi. Got tied up with his defense. And a penalty. I thought that was going to be a drip. I didn't see the uh, animation come up, but it is. So that penalty chance dashed. Four on four hockey for about a minute here. And then eight treads will be on the power play. And probably one of the sharpest, most jar jarring interference, or excuse me, tripping calls you're ever going to see there. Nikki Dangles' this player just kind of dropping down immediately there as the stick went through his skate. But nevertheless, that's huge there for Ahrefs to get this to four on four, clean a little bit of space out, not have to worry about the PK. You can kind of get back to playing more of your game with a big even strength. So the four on four winding down quickly. Poke check there by Dominointi. Fed into the middle. Picked up by H-Reds, but kept in by Havu. Saucer pass off the pads and a good effort there by Flyer Coogan, who tried to force that one past phase. Half minute power play now for H-Reds though as time expired on the four on four. And he is lifted into the air and planted. Was Flyer Coogan back on top. Sibelius sprawls out to make the save. Shot goes across the mouth of the goal. Chopped along and finally cleared as the penalty time expires for both teams. What a sequence there, Brandon. Both goalies making big saves on each end. You saw FaZe with the big save, getting a little bit of help from King of Vapes to clear that one out of the blue paint. And a big save from Sibelius on the other end just a minute or so after. So we said goaltending was going to be huge. FaZe with a big save. Sibelius responding with one of his own on the other end. As that shot bounced off the Dominointi's body and ricocheted into the crowd. And is won by a good person in Manitoba, we'll say, this time. We have people from all over the countries and all over the globe tuned in. Manitoba this time. Not Sheboygan or Shawanigan or... Shaboopy, for those that like Family Guy. Here we are. Right side now. Flyer Coogan. Back behind the net for Yeagleson. That was a chance to get it passed on the short side. That one came in from way downtown by Nasu Stelia. Was deflected in front. Another chance in. Good save by FaZe. That one made it through. Final three seconds here. Trying to get out of the period, and they will. H-Reds still tied here with Havu. Havu finally knocking at the door, but it comes up to FaZe to make three or four big saves to keep this game tied. And you know, Nick, we may have not seen a goal, but we were not shorted of action in that second period. A few big chances, a few big saves from both sides, and you know... What a result to still be tied here at the end of the second. You felt like Havu had some chances with a few power plays, but Atres just not letting them pass. And a few chances for Atres as well, but Sibelius stepping up as we said he needed to, especially with that big save there in the last few minutes. Really fun to see this game tied at one apiece in a third period all decided in 20 minutes. As two shots from Havu in period number two, but man, those two shots were effective late in the game and Sibelius on the other side of the ice just sprawling out like you said to make that save and then that shot from Villapoyca just skirting the mouth of the goal leaves this thing tied going into the third twitch.tv slash capitals good to be here and nice to have you there for the third period of game number two Atreds leading the series best of seven one game to nothing flipped in now by Nasu Stelia down right to the tape of Domi. Way to be there. Good geometry lessons from that left defender. Poked along and pushed. Benito finds it instead along the half board. Brought in from the left corner. Intercepted there nicely by Vili Kuhn. And Havu will start their attack. Up the ice, but decides to revert and try again. Eagleson will bring it back down. From the left circle, Vili Kuhn left there from Nasu Stelia. That's intercepted by Benito. Benito trying to get that one to Nikki Dangles on force. And despite what one hockey player may say, forces did not work there. And play continues. Dominointi banked off the board. Smartly doing that. What a play there. Tried to get it back on the give and go. But denied there by King of Apes and Domi, respectively. King of Apes now. Over to Villapoyca. Off the board bank. Master Stelia behind the net now. Benito. Fires one on short side off the mask there. 
And King of Apes will bring it all the way back to slow it down. Flipped in now, and they'll give chase. Filipoik is there first, but Flyer Kungen was able to recover it. In the penalty box area, pushed along. Looking for Dominointi. He's got it. Now Yeagleson trying to fight for it. He's met there. A couple of stick checks, stick lifts, poke checks. Who comes out with it? Off the iron. And that's going to be a crisis averted there for H-Reds. Nine gone so far here in the third period. Still no score in the third. 1-1 tie game. Delmi now starting the cycle here. Kiki dangles, throws that along. Can King of Apes get there? No. King of Apes along the red line, fires it in. Going to be picked up along the boards on the right side now. Kiki dangles, shaves off a check, ends up with the puck. Now King of Apes again, give and go. Kept in the zone. Masustelli with a good steal, though. Can't get past Nikki Dangles, though, on the back check. Good move by him to break up that counterattack. Good speed through the zone. Now Villapoika. Good no-look shot there. Wow. I thought he was going to drive in. Turns around, fires it, and Sibelius almost came off his post. Yeah, Nick, and Sibelius, he has answered the call so far here in this game, too. Some big saves. That's another one to add on to the list right there. Havu Gaming takes this one from behind their net once more as they're looking to go back to what got them to the dance. Good poke check, though. Wow, Benito just standing tall. And just making that poke check to force Havu to reset once more. This is a good four-check pressure by H-Reds. They know how to work the upper third of the ice quite well when they don't have the puck. All members of the, ice, of the, of the team moving up and down the ice all together. That's really what keeps them in line for their structure. It's that style of soccer you mentioned in the pregame, Brandon. Yeah, and we talked about it, especially with them offensively being able to push certain guys up, especially on the defensive end. Well, it's similar defensively. You'll see them kind of go up a little bit on the play and be aggressive, kind of attacking a little bit with the strikers or the wingers. In this case, the three forwards of Villa Puega, Nicky Dangles, and Benito, and you're seeing it work out for them right now really well. Ooh, and a good effort there as that puck was waiting for Villa Puega. But stolen by Havu, icing your call. 2.18 left here in the third period. Will we see overtime in game number two? Shots are 9-7 to seven in favor of H-Reds. Faceoff comes to the left of Sibelius. Draw. H-Reds looking to win that off the push. They do. Met there in the high slot area, though. And out for Havu. Havu, Nasu Stelia. Wrist shot looking for it. Over to Dominointi, and he hits... Phase instead of getting past him. Turn around to keep it in the play, though. Still in the zone. Dominointi circling through defenders beautifully. Now Flyer Kugan is, but that one's intercepted. Under a minute to go here in the third period. Benito fires that one off the backboard and hits the back of the cage. Out for Havu to receive it. Poke checks will keep it in the neutral zone. Half minute left here in regulation. Two on one forming here. H Reds, good move there by Nasu Stelia. One time chance to King of Apes, though. And King of Apes comes into the right circle area and rips a laser right past Sibelius. It's two to one. Oh, Nick, and for Havu, you just have to feel a little deflated on that one. A beautiful play, and it's exactly who you said could come in and make that big play earlier in the pregame opening. King of Apes, commented from that point, absolutely rips it past Sibelius, and just 26.1 seconds separate H-Reds from a 2 to nothing series lead. Wow, what a play. Good move there by King of Apes to come in and just clap one. He had all the time in the world as that puck came to his stick in motion. And he fires it on net. Great shot there by the offensive defenseman in King of Apes. By the way, fun fact, this man is like seven foot six. That's not true. He's like 6'11". But man, what a big guy off the ice and a big play from the big man on the ice to give H-Reds a late game lead here in the third period of game number two. As the team obviously takes a timeout here after the icing. And will they pull their goalie? We'll have to see. 
You know, Nick, something that really sticks out to me, we talked about shots for Havu. He said they had five in the second, in the end of the first period, just two since that point alone, and none here in the third. They're going to have to change that here to get back into this. Did the gas run out of the ship here in game two after a good start by Havu? Time will tell here in about 14 seconds. The Lapoika right there at the blue line. Now they're pulling their goalie. Here comes the extra man. Good move in front. Eagleson from Dominointi. Good save by FaZe. Banked off the boards with finesse there by Benito. Nikki Dangles just fires it on net and he scores. Diving into the net. Nikki Dangles with the empty net goal gives Havu the surefire victory in this one. It's now three to one. And that should do it there for H Reds. And a great victory there for them. They come back from behind yet again, rattle three unanswered. And I think Nikki Dangles, even though he might have gotten the last one, we will all remember the big shot from the point from the defenseman and King of Apes to get this victory for H Reds and go up two to nothing in the series. A huge goal there by King of Apes, the game winning goal. As we look at it one more time here, King of Apes play in down low, finds him right there inside the right circle and bangs it home there. I know Lime is saying they're heating up. H-Red's definitely heating up. And they take the series lead with a 3-1 to one win here and lead this best of seven two games to nothing. And you know, Nick, going back and looking at that game winning goal, you want to know where that all started? The defense behind the net. Havu had possession of that puck. I couldn't tell who it was that had jarred it loose, but they kept attacking, caused that turnover, and passed it over to King of Apes, who was open for that one-timer. We talked about how defense turns into great offense and how HRS capitalizes at that each and every time. They did so right there at a key moment, and it got them this win. So a huge win, and now a clamp on this series. Two games in, they've won two. And Havu, now in a little bit of trouble here, down two games to nothing, going into game three, but they are home for the next two games, Brandon. Yeah, and it depends on how much stock you put into that, but I think for Havu, this game three, you have to see it as a must win. I don't think we've ever seen a team come back from down three nothing against a team like H Reds before, and with the way H Reds are playing, especially defensively, it's hard to see Havu doing it now. So this game three, uh, must win pretty much for them, and I'm pretty sure that Havu, I'm sure, in their locker room, stressing just the same. Yeah, Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside Brandon Bigsby, B Major, all over the internet at those handles. King Lime out today with an illness. We'll call it day to day. We'll chalk it up on the injury report as such. We are here, game number three, about to take place here on twitch.tv slash capitals. Tell your friends to tell your friends to tell your friends. If you have more than one circle of friends, that would be easy for you to do. To come here and watch this, the inaugural season for the Caps Gaming Showcase EU division, right here on twitch.tv slash capitals. Brandon, your standout there, I think it goes to King of Apes here. We talk about offense getting activated from the defense. We talked about it in the pregame. We talked about it between games one and two, and then we saw it come to life here in game number two. Yeah, and I think it has to be King of Apes. He got the game winner, but I think underratedly, too, you have to remember, he's the one that had the primary assist on the Villa Puebla goal to tie things up and went to him at the point. He got it open, waited, and passed it over to Villa Puebla to give him that space to tie this thing up on that one-timer. So King of Apes, he was all over the ice offensively, and we said that that was something to look out for. That came to fruition here in this game, too, and if not for him and his efforts on the offensive end, Havu may have been able to have stolen that one. Yeah, Havu was really knocking at the door for the first maybe one and a half periods, and then H-Reds did what H-Reds does and plays defensively to clamp down and adjusted. And we talk about this a lot in between all the videos we do, all the interviews we do, the pregame analysis. Hey, do you play your game or do you adjust your game to what the other team is doing? And a lot of the rhetoric from most hockey teams is, well, we just have to play our game. Well, if your game isn't working and H-Reds adapts to that, what do you do as a Havu gaming club right now down two games to nothing? And I think that's what makes H-Reds so dominant is that a lot of times teams do come in with that mindset like, hey, it might not be working, but it's what we do well. It's what we've always done well. We have to stick to it. But after a while, I'm waiting for a team and personally, I haven't seen it yet. Maybe you can attest to a different experience, but I've yet to see a team face HRES and say, we're going to just change it up. We're just going to change what we're doing. It, what we do is not working. We have to change it up. Because to me, 
Hreds, they've been able to shut down what both teams have done. And for Havu, in this case, it hasn't been much different. They had a successful first period, but after that, only three shots in total between periods two and three. So I think you almost have to switch things up a little bit to get something going for yourself. Maybe even just to throw a different look and maybe make Hreds change a little bit on what they are doing. So a must-win game three. We'll see how Havu looks, but right now, Hreds... That defense turning into good offense, we saw it throughout that game. It's a big reason that they won this game too. And I don't think that without King of Aves and Domi playing the way they did on that back end, they're able to win that game. Yeah, we talk about Vili Kung and Nasu Stelia doing what worked to get them that first goal. And then they got away from that. Whether it be from the four check of H Reds or just changing up what you're doing, sometimes it's that mental toughness that you have to go back to to allow your team to have success from what works. So do what works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Adjust the things that are broken. And I think that comes from just zone time, establishing your zone time yeah. and getting your players moving on the ice. We're going to see that in just a second. Game three, their match. We're going to go back down there. So we'll see what happens in game number three. Brandon, your final thoughts here. Yeah, and we kind of mentioned it for Havwood. I think you kind of segued perfectly into that. Just getting that zone time, getting that time on attack and taking advantage of of the time and tactic you get. I thought Havu defensively weren't bad, but offensively just were not able to get enough going for themselves. So I think you just have to figure out how can you take advantage of the little zone time you get. You know Atred's not gonna give you out possession. So when you do have it, you have to make the most of it. We'll see how Havu does that in a game three that I think personally pretty much have to win here. Cannot go down three, nothing. Two to one, you still give yourself a good chance and you're in striking distance. Three, nothing. Well, Atred's only has to win one of the next four to clinch a championship. So we'll see Havu probably come out with a lot of aggression and throw everything they have at Atred's here in this game three. It's gonna make it a lot of fun to watch. So game three about to get underway here. The camera shaking means it's ready to play hockey. Havu in those darker jerseys now going north on your screen. The black jerseys, silver lettering, green trim. H-Reds in these red and whites as that saucer pass finds its way off the pad of Sibelius to start game number three. Dominointi will take this one out for Nasu Stelia. He's up on the attack now. He's been doing that all game, but then once they get in, they cannot get the cycle going, and he can't get back into the offense once he gets through the blue line. See how H Reds adapts to that through this contest and see what it, Havu can do to break through this defensive core that is H Reds. King of Apes. We'll get that one over to Benito. Nicky dangles off the board. That will allow the team to reset. That over. Broken up there by Nasu Stelia again. He's been great so far. Other than a turnover in game two. That led to that first goal. To tie up this game between Atreds and Havu early on in the first period. Slow and methodical play now as two three to one victories. Gives H Reds a two games to nothing lead in this best of seven. Good movement there by H Reds. That was broken up nicely by the defense for Havu Gaming. Intercepted by Villapoika. Good way to turn this one around. Eagleson will bear that pressure down and alleviate for now. Deep forecheck here from H Reds. Can Havu get past that? There goes Eagleson again. Lots of speed up the left side and see what he can do. Gets it back to Nasu Celia on the give and go, looking to feed Dominointi with a chance there. And they just can't get that angle on net. Can't get that puck to that man in the middle of the ice. See if they keep working at it through this game. Halfway gone through the first period, no score. Just a couple of shots. Pass there, bounced off the skate. And it comes out to center. See what Atreds can do now. Not much there as Nasu Stelia was able to intercept that one early on in the attack. And that one found King of Apes, though. And that's the turnover chances. We talk about chance there scores. From the turnover again, Brandon. It's 1-0 for Atreds. Their first opening lead of this series. 
You hope the narrative isn't getting tiring, but you have to say it yet again for Age Reds it's because it is so, so important for them and they always seem to make this happen. Great defense turning into great opportunity on offense and capitalizing on every opportunity that they have. You see it right there. They cause the turnover. It gets on the stick of Villapoika, and he capitalizes with a goal past the belly to get the scoring started. That is absolutely huge, and Nick, that is exactly what HRS does so well. They do it yet again here to get the scoring started in game three. They lose the puck coming into the zone. They give it back to the defense, and then they force a four-check. King of Apes keeps it in the zone, and it generates the goal. That is, if it's football, it's points from turnovers. I think that's what you call it. Yeah. And they do that here, all from keeping the puck in the zone. So maybe not on the first look. You get in on the second look, and now you draw a penalty here, though. And if you're Havu, you got to get this one here, don't you? Yeah, I think this is a must-score power play. They've struggled on the power play all series long in the first two games, and now you're down one to nothing, down two nothing in the series. You need something to change the momentum in your favor to get something going. You cannot let what is a must-win game three get two out of play for yourself. So, Havu, have to take advantage here. This is a big opportunity here for them to get something going. Face-off to the right of phase. Aggressive face-off set up here for Havu. They win this one back. Set play. Eagleson shot. Blocked there by King of Apes. Second effort, though, fell to the stick of Eagleson. Couldn't pull the trigger. Now they're keeping it in the zone is Havu. Good effort there to get another shot on. Villapoika finally clearing the pressure. And Havu will come all the way back down. Good start so far for Havu. Here in period number one of this power play opportunity. As they slow down to reset. Good way through. Flyer Kungen. Now Vili Kung. Back on the give and go. Right point. Looking to drive in. He will. Dominointi chance. There in front. And that was Domi able to get that puck out of the way. And that will kill off this penalty. And H Reds counters this into an offensive attack, but only briefly. Good kill there by H Reds. And that's going to be a momentum booster after weathering the storm there in the first half of that power play, Brandon. Yeah, and that was not what Havu needed at all, and they kind of were just stuck there in the neutral zone after that first offensive faceoff. H Reds cleared it out, and it felt like Havu was just never, never able to break past that blue line again after that point, and it's just continuing what they've done so well in games one and H two, or game two. H Reds that is just being stout defensively, and that defensive prowess led to a goal here to open things up in the first period of game three, Nick and. Right now, HRS just looking like a cohesive unit right now through the first seven periods of action. Through seven periods, just two goals from Havu Gaming. Seven from HRS. Two shots to one, your shot total here. And still plenty of time for Havu to get an opening goal for their club for game three. And maybe take the lead back from HRS here, who are. Feeling it, I think, is what the kids would say. Maybe cracked if we're playing Call of Duty. Cracked, buzzing, feeling it, whatever you want to call it, HREDS is doing that here in this series. And I think you have to credit them with the way that they have been able to shut down Havu defensively and not allow them to really break past with a lot of success. Outside of that first period of Game 2, it just feels like Havu has really just been on the defensive a lot of this game. And... You have to credit Sabellius for some of the saves he's made, but after a while, you have to find a way to be on the attack, to be the aggressor. Havu's just not had that so far in the series, so they have some time, but they're going to have to figure out how quick, because right now, Atrex in firm control of the series, and they're really going to have a grip on it if they go up 3 to nothing. Game 3, period number 2 underway here. Twitch.tv slash Capitals. Make sure you're following at Caps Gaming on Twitter. As Havu Gaming has had some success here, getting the puck in deep and then looking for that last pass. They just haven't connected to that last pass. Here's a chance here. Dominoiti trying to backhand that one up to Flyer Kungen. Couldn't connect. Three men from the corner. Who comes out with it? Traffic in front. Chance there for FaZe. Behind his back, he covers it up. Man, and FaZe has come up with some really big saves here when he has had the opportunity. But 
Something I want to touch on, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it as well, Nick. You mentioned just not being able to connect on that last pass. I wonder if Havu, after a while, if you begin to just take the approach of instead of making that one extra pass, if you don't maybe just put the puck on that if you're in position to, it can't hurt to. You haven't had a lot of shots. One of the two goals that you've had in the series was kind of a clunky goal where you had it on them that went through. You kind of wonder if maybe they start to transition from that one last pass becoming a shot on that and maybe just giving yourselves that extra opportunity here as you're down in this series. Now we talk about guys like Eki who mastered some of the meta in previous versions of this game and the changes along the way and him not being able to stand in front anymore because of the changes that made to the rebounds and the big guys in front and how do you adapt to that? Natred's doing that so well. Havu, not typically the ones that do the rebound meta, but perhaps maybe that's what they do here. Maybe that at least they got to get traffic in front. Maybe forces should work. Something's got to change here. They're so close to getting it right. Here's a chance for Dominoitio again. Billy Coon, not a lot on that shot. Fell right to H Red Stick, and they'll draw their fourth consecutive penalty here in this series. Yeah, and it's something we talked about in H Reds. A lot of times when they take these penalties, it's because of the way that they play defensively. They use that stick play a lot, so they are enough to having a little bit more trips than what some teams may have, but Havu not making them pay for it. They've not been able to take advantage on the power play, haven't connected on any of their power plays so far in the series, and boy, oh boy, would it be a big one for them to do here. Down one to nothing in the game and down two nothing in the series. That power play percentage just winding down over time here as that chance comes in good shot not a lot on it but it fell to havu gaming yet again let's see if they can build from this behind the net with urgency now as they're all to the puck eagleson goes over to billy coon now flyer coon billy coon still behind the net trying to buy some time good pressure here trying to get into the middle of the ice here for havu gaming final 15 seconds shot in rebounded Bounced off a player there. As the ricochets did not pay off. Another kill by H Reds and a momentum booster here. They're in the zone. King of Apes down low now. Nikki Dangles wraps that around the boards. Delmi back to Benito. Benito fires one in. Good save there by Sibelius. You know, it wasn't the power play that Hav who was looking for in, or in order to tie this back up at one apiece, but nevertheless, it was a lot better than the previous power plays we had seen. They stayed in the zone, really, for about all two minutes, had a good cycle going, just were never able to get that clean look there on phase in the two minutes they had, but a little bit of an improvement there on the power play. They get one more, maybe you look for them to break things open. There's a slap shot coming in. That one's paddled aside by Stabilius yet again. Four shots so far. He's let in one. Another shot coming in. Rebound chance. Cleaned up nicely. Havu gaming. Havu four wide in. Good chance here. Flyer Kung and now Dominoiti. Great poke check there though by Benito. Back on defense. Benito able to just shove that one away. And Havu will flip it high and let it fly. Picked up by H Reds from the corner. Villapoika, left side with speed, saucered in, and it just finds the bread basket of Sibelius for the whistle. And you know, Nick, I know that obviously Havu not having the success that they want to here in this series so far, but I think we have to credit Sibelius and the job that he has done in net against this HRS team. Obviously, the score is both being 3-1 to one in Games 1 and Games 2 in favor of H-Reds, but I think he's been solid back there in net. We said he would need to step up for this Havu team for them to have a chance, and I think he has done that so far. I think Havu just needs to find the answers offensively to what H-Reds has done defensively, but the goaltending, I think, has been pretty stout for them here through the first eight periods so far. Goaltending, definitely the key right now when it comes to the success they're having. Face off to the left of Sibelius, won by Havu in his club. Banked off the boards, found Dominointi. Oh, and that pass there was going up for Yeagles and they couldn't connect. King of Apes with the interception. That last line of defense there comes from all players from H Reds. As a bit of a miscommunication here, Villapoika had to get that one deep and cause some havoc and disrupt. That chance. About a minute left here in the second period. Masustelia left side. 
They'll try the right side now. Another bank pass finally connects to Dominoite. He's got some space. The Eagles in shot. Good save by FaZe. FaZe comes across and makes that save from seemingly out of nowhere. And that's going to do it for the second period. FaZe looking at the saves here. Keeps this one a one nothing game. What a save that was by FaZe there at the end of that period. I mean, he looked like he went through a portal from one post to the other on that one. I thought that was a clear goal for Eagleson on the left side, but FaZe just denying the opportunity, saying, I will not let my team lose this lead. I will not let this puck go past me. And he keeps this score at bay at one to nothing in favor of Hrez, and we credit the defense of Hrez, have to credit big saves like that just as equally there from their goaltender in phase. An amazing play to keep this lead for his team. Full metal phase over here. This is my goal. There are many other like it, but this one is mine. I will defend this goal to the best of my ability. That's phase right now as they go into game three, period number three with a one nothing lead, Havu. We're going to get their first goal of the game here in the third period. Twitch.tv slash Capitals. This is the inaugural EU division of the Caps Gaming Showcase Season 3. Presented to you by Lighthouse. Powered by LeagueGaming.com. You'll see the top left of your screen there as we go offside. The series update. And the right side of your screen will have the players and their goals and their stats. And everything great that they do through the game. Neutral zone play here. Eagleson. Couple of dangles. Buy some time. Trying to backhand that one in past FaZe. And he did stab at it to get it past him. But FaZe stands tall again. You can see the passing effectiveness there. About 80% each. These teams play the puck so well to each other. Face off here. One by h -Reds. Good push win to get that one to King of Apes. He tried to geometrically bounce that one off the boards, and while it didn't come off perfect, it did work as Villapoika goes offside here as the puck trickles off to the other side of the ice. 17.25 to go here in the third period. We'll have another face-off in the neutral zone. Things slowing down here in the third period. As King Lime would say, it's time to heat up, especially if you're Havu Gaming. Good poke check along for Nicky Dangles. He takes it in stride. Dominointi is back there to recover that puck and he'll start the attack but Nikki dangles again poke checks that one free King of Apes keeps it in though I've just got to get this out or at least get possession they do the ladder and it's offside for Lepoika couldn't get that one back in the zone we'll take another draw from the neutral zone two more minutes gone and this can only favor h -Reds here keeping the puck out of their end as each of these stoppages just takes time off the clock Villapoika's force pass found the skate of Dominointi. He'll lift that one into the zone. They'll give chase back there for King of Apes. And nobody in a dark color jersey was in that area. Now a rush down the left side of the ice. Lays that one up for King of Apes. Drives in deep. Puck in front of the net was cleared out by Dominointi. And they'll take their shape once more. Nikki Dangles through the neutral zone. That one's in deep. Picked up by Benito. Now for Villapoika. Shot was deflected. Now Yeagleson, though, with an errant poke check. He almost took that thing back the other way. Nicky Dangle slips off a check. Lays it up for Domi. Domi in front for Benito. King of Apes will be there to keep it in the zone. He will. Domi keeps it in as well. He's got some help. Left side now, Villapoika can't recover that. Eagleson one-on-one -on -one falls to Domi's stick, and Nicky Dangles gets rubbed off the puck there. Players hitting players all over the place right now as we approach the halfway marker of period number three here in regulation. 1-0 H-Reds winning this series so far. Two games to nothing. They're ahead. Looking to put the stranglehold on this best of seven contest. As they go all the way back for icing, we go over to Brandon to give us his feedback halfway through this period. 
Yeah, Nick, and right now, Ahrefs trying to hold on to this one nothing lead, but I think they fancy themselves well. The way they've been playing defensively, the saves the phase has been able to make. You have to assume that if they can get the second goal, they probably can see this one out. Havu gonna have to be aggressive without making mistakes and really try to get this one tied because next goal, I think, could very well lead us to a winner here in this pivotal game three. You might be right on that, Brandon. As Atred's banking these pucks off these boards. And it's something they've started to do maybe about two seasons ago. Dominic with a step there. That was denied. Is banking these pucks off the boards in weird ways that just find players. As we have a tripping penalty here. And Atred's now going on the power play after a trip from Havu. Yeah, and that is not what Havu Gaming needed here in this situation. Trying to seize a little bit of momentum in a third period that's been pretty back and forth for the most part. But nevertheless, a chance here for Ahrefs to try to really double this lead up. We said this next goal could be big. If they're the ones that score it, they can really see themselves go through here with a 3 nothing lead. So a big power play and a big penalty kill here for both these two sides. The Lapoika shot almost trickled past Sibelius. He had to reach out there to his right side and pull that one in. Face off here to Sibelius' right. Picked up by Havel. Behind the net. Trying to work that one out. Slap shot it along to clear off some time off the power play. Not much time left on the clock here. As we approach the final quarter of this period. More fractions. Don't like it. King of Apes. Domi. One time chance. They're blocked. Good way for Havel to get in front of that. Flipped off the glass and out. About 20 left here in the power play. King of Apes. On the right side, Villapoika. Oh, and I thought that was on side, Brandon. But no, as time expires, we go back to full strength. I think Ahrefs is okay with this, though, Nick. They have the lead 1-0. The puck is on their stick, just controlling possession, letting that clock tick down. That's a benefit for them. They just don't want Havu to get any chances. As long as they have that puck, that means Havu can't score. They have the lead, so this goes to their advantage. I think they're fine with letting that reset. Dominointi looking to change that narrative here with the help of his team in the Eagles. And now Vili Kum, lots of pressure up there, and that's some urgency we've seen from Havu that we haven't seen much. Since period number one of game two, we just saw a flash of that there. As Atreds is just suffocating the middle of the ice right now. We're about a minute left here in the third period. Real time, 60 seconds to conclude this period. As it's flipped in. Picked up and put down by Daomi. Good poke check by Eagleson. Eagleson. Oh, trying to feed that one to Billy Kung. He did, but he couldn't get the shot off. Giving chase all the way back. They got to pull their goalie here. Let's see if they do. Pass up for Nasu Stelia. Flipped in. Trying to get past that defensive wall from Atreds. Trying to reverse play. They did. Eagleson. Left corner. Nasu Stelia. Extra man coming out now. Head over to Dominointi. Dominointi. Billy Coom. One time chance. Blocked there by Benito. And a penalty here. Tripping is the call. And Havu goes to the power play. Six on four. Oh, oh and here we go, Nick. That was an interesting animation. I doubt oh. Domi is going to be too happy about that one. But this is a big chance. Havu, they need a power play goal. They haven't had one all series long. What's a better time to do it right here? They'll pull the goalie as well. So six on four action we're going to see. Havu setting up now. Nasu Stelia, left circle. Wrap around. Chance off the iron. Fire Kungen. Billy Koo keeping it in. Final 10 seconds. Nasustelia left circle. Poke check free. Mickey Dangles clears the zone. Nasustelia one last rush. They're offside. Oh, Nasustelia, he pulled to that backhand a little far. Atreds using that defense at that blue line, their own blue line this time. And with 1.1 left, they're going to see this through to a victory. And Havu Gaming so close to tying it up. FaZe gets a Finals shutout here in game three. And Atreds takes this one and they have a stranglehold on this series, winning this series right now up ahead. Three games to none.
we might have only seen one goal, Nick, but what action, as you can see, the wraparound attempt there with about 20 seconds left, just couldn't squeak past face there, and wow, Nick Havu, you just have to feel for them so, so close, so many chances, but just not available to capitalize on one to get this thing tied at one apiece. And Hreds one win away from being Europe's Caps Gaming Showcase champions. And the early goal from Villapoika gets them through to win this one one to nothing. Hreds out here trying to Kenny Omega and win all the championships from all the places this year. And they're starting 2022 off with a bang to do that with this Caps Gaming Showcase championship. If they can win one more out of the next four, they will be the inaugural EU division champions for Caps Gaming. Yeah, and it would be well-deserved. We talked about Hreds, and they've been dominant all season long. They've held that one seed for the majority of the season. They played this very same Havu team in a battle that was between two of the last undefeateds remaining in Week 5, and they were able to sweep Havu then, looking to do the same now. And it's interesting. They've only lost four games all season long, two in the regular season, both of those to Tunnel Vision and the lone series they lost in Week 6, and then... Only two playoff games and one in round one against the Rabro Hockey. And then they lost in round three a game versus Conquer Gaming. But other than that, it's been a dominant run for Hreds. And they're continuing them here in this final. They're one game away from capping it off with yet another championship for themselves. Let's see if they can do it. Still some work to do. But man, oh man, if they put themselves in a great position here up three to nothing. Holding back the curtain a little bit here. As we'll give you some interesting stats. When we talk about Havu and Hreds. Havu has never lost a series against them, uh, has never lost a seven-game series when they're up by three games to nothing. Uh, and in the history of finals matchups between these two player, uh, two teams, we have never seen a reverse sweep either. So uh, there could be a time for firsts. There could be an upset. Yeah. We don't know. We still have at least one more game, if not four more games, if Havu can climb this very vertical hill that is in front of them right now. And you have to remember something. This is not the first time that Havu has been in this situation. I want to take you back to the quarterfinals versus Yip Yavaskula. They were in game four, down 2-1 in the series, and it took them a goal down 2-1 in the game as well, with 13 seconds left just to keep their season alive. They were 13 seconds from being out. Yip Yavaskula pulling off an upset and being in the semis. But they tied it up, won that game, and then won the next game as well in overtime. So Havu, they're yeah. not unfamiliar with their backs being against the wall because they were 13 seconds from not even being here. We would be talking about maybe Yavaskula or Ferlanda or Granite being in the series matchup versus H Reds. But no, they found a way to do it then. They swept Ferlanda the following week and got here to this point. They're going to have to find a way to do it now. But against a different beast and a whole different mountain to climb down three to nothing. But Havu team with a lot of experience. I think this would definitely be one for the history books. They were able to pull it off. So we'll see if they can do it. Absolutely. And I'm being told here, I'm looking at my game sheets. And I'm looking at what's happening on my screen. We might have a change in positions happening right now. Mm. Uh, Flyer Kungen. Dominointi and Yeagleson may be swapping positions. Yes, Dominointi going to center. So Flyer mm. Kugan will take the right wing position in this pivotal game number four for them to keep their hopes and dreams alive for this reverse sweep. And you know, I, I like that move there for Havu. You have nothing to lose. Why not switch it up here as Flyer Kugan, a guy that has played right wing actually through a majority of the season yeah. he didn't start playing center until that get Yvasco series that we mentioned and he played it again against for london the next week but most of his games this season have been at that right wing spot so now surprising to see him move to the right wing dominante at center and then eagleson stay at that left wing spot so i like that for havu things aren't working why not change it up you have nothing to lose down three to nothing in the series why not throw a different look at HRS that maybe they did not expect to see and maybe see if it works out for them? Both the right wing and left wing right now for Havu. Puck moving defenseman is the choice that they've made uh, for this game four. Will it work? We will know in just a moment. But will you work for a prize pool hosted by Caps Gaming? Brandon, we'll tell you more about that right now. 
That is right, just because we are done on the Sixes side does not mean we are done in general here at Caps Gaming as our threes tournament, both for Xbox One and Xbox Series X, start here in just a matter of a week and two weeks. The Xbox One side starting here in a week's time, right here, a week from today, actually, March 19th, a $1,500 prize pool into the Xbox Series X slash S a week after that for the same exact presented by our friends at mcdonald's gaming dmv 32 teams for each side we'll get to see who the number one threes team is both for xbox one and xbox series x slash s if you want to sign up or learn more about this registered tournament event here by our friends by caps gaming make sure to go to www.rivalgames.com slash tournaments in order to learn more or to sign your team up for one of these two respective consoles there's 32 total teams not a ton of spots remaining so make sure you go right now learn more sign up if you want to enter www.rivalgames.com slash tournaments in order to enter your team into the threes challenge one tournament for each side $1,500 prize pool we're gonna be covering it right here gonna be a lot of fun I know you like threes I like threes Tegan likes threes so much high-flying action it's where we really see that skill showcase gonna be a lot of fun to watch that unfold I like threes mainly because I can count to three however this is game number four <laughs> and uh, for game number four Havu really looking to win this one they need to obviously nothing to lose as you mentioned and they've been here before like you said so all the storylines are in perfect place for this brandon we yeah. could see some firsts we could see some repeats or we could see h reds winning the prize pool winning the 7500 dollars out of the 10k that they're uh 7500 euros out of the out of the 10k that they're competing for and bringing home another championship they're gonna have to get a new hardware trophy case by the time 2022 is over yeah the old one's pretty much filled up at this point you could have maybe filled that up with the 2021 awards alone now you add in 2022 we're only three months and some change in and it feels like h reds has won just about every tournament since the calendar year flipped over and put us in to this new year of 2022 and h reds just as dominant as ever i cannot remember the last time that it just feels like they have been down i mean it feels like they have just been in a lead or have had an advantage in every series and matchup that they've played in ever since last year in about that July to June point. So it's going to be tough for Havu to really get back into this thing. But with a team with that type of experience, they've been here before, they've made these comebacks before, they can do it. But man, it's going to be tough against the HRS team having the win four straight, pull off a reverse sweep. Man, it's going to be a tough one. But We'll, we'll see what Avu asked for us, man. They've pulled things out before, but this will be a whole different story if they can do it here against the HRS team that, like I said, has looked just ever so dominant here throughout this Caps Gaming Showcase and throughout the last year, to say the least. Absolutely. As we have some notes here in our in our, in our pre-game uh, production meetings we have and all of our notes we take, you wrote down, HRS have allowed more than two goals only twice all playoffs. They lost four to three versus Orebro Hockey in round two, and three to two versus Conquer. Can they pull off the sweep? And will they make sure they do not lose a game by more than two goals here in game four? I have to be honest, man. I think they do. I really love the way they're playing defensively. And you kind of feel like Havu, they were kind of starting to get things going there. But... I, I just don't love the success or the lack of, in that case, that Havu have had on the power play. We talked about that would be something they needed to take advantage of because HRS does have that tendency to take a lot of stick-based penalties, whether it be those high stickings or those tripping penalties. They use that stick play a lot. So when they do draw those chips, you have to take advantage when HRS gives you that little bit of room. And Havu just haven't found a way to done that yet. I love how they've played on the PK HRS. They've been great on the regular five on five defense. I don't see them letting up now. So we'll see what they can change, Havu. They're a great team. We saw that they're changing a few things within the forward trio in terms of the positioning of Flyer Kungan and Dominointi. We'll see what that helps. But man, with the way HRS is playing, I don't see that streak breaking. I think they take this thing home and sweep it. So Brandon saying, get out the brooms. I hope you have your popcorn out and your favorite beverage. 
maybe a Coke and a Big Mac. Who am I to judge? Nevertheless, we are here. Game number four. The players may have changed positions, but their player names and their jerseys are the same from game three. As the teams sync up here and get you ready for a potential series clinching fiasco situation. Feud, rivalry. It is H Reds and Havu Gaming. Once more, period number one underway of game number four. Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside Brandon Bigsby, B Major. Line, we hope you get better, buddy. Here in the action for you. As we have the opening faceoff underway. The teams are trading positions in center ice. That one's in deep and picked up by Havu. Billy Coombe. He's got it back on his stick once more. Pushed off that was Flyer Kungen, not Dominointi. As you see, the center and right wing have changed. That's something to look for. As we move through game number four. See if that holds up. And if it has any success for this team. In down low now. Eagleson fighting off a check. It's Domin Flyer Kungen, rather. And now Eagleson again. There's Dominointi. Sent him in from the right side now. Driving in middle. Trying to get that one over for Nasu Stelia. Poke check free by Nikki Dangles. More poke checks by Nikki Dangles. Billy Coon stopping short, trying to get past Domi, and he couldn't do so. Four on two coming into the zone. Rebound chance, though. And Sibelius doesn't give that up, and he holds on for the whistle. And Sibelius, we talked about how good he's been despite some of the shortcomings of Havu in terms of the scoreboard. That's another good save for him right there, just staying sharp where he was supposed to be, not letting anything tricky get past him. Face off to Sibelius' left. Shot there blocked. Eagleson on the half boards over to Nasu Stelia, and he's trying to come out to the middle of the ice. Dangerous move there, but he got able to get away with it. Hip check there, forces offside, and... The urgency from Atreds right now, you can see it on the ice. Yeah, and I know both of these teams are definitely going to be playing with a little bit of urgency and trying to get that first goal could be so, so big for either side. Havu trying to keep their championship hopes alive. Atreds not trying to let them crawl back into this. They want to close this thing out as soon as possible. Don't want to give any chances to a talented team like Havu Gaming for sure. Puck comes all the way back. So we'll go back down the ice. Slow and methodical. Filipoika, nice little slip past the defense. Spinning move. Putting it on net. Off the pad of Sibelius. From the corner. Working out of it is Domi. It was Nikki Dangles to Villapoika. And Villapoika met there with a stick check from Nasustelia. Who broke up that opportunity smartly and wisely. Drops that off for the steal, though. Villapoika, spin move, putting it on that villain. Willie Kuhn could not get a handle on it. And it fell back to Sibelius. Dangerous move there from the turnover by Vili Kuhn. And I might not be in the locker room of Havu, oh. but I think I can already hear the collective sigh of relief on that one. That was a dangerous chance there. Atres is not able to get it. Sibelius sharp in the defense, stuck with him on that one. Let's keep this one at zero to zero. Short side chance there from Villapoyca. They'll do it again from Sibelius' left. Dominointi will take this draw with Benito on the other side. Benito wins this one. Back to Villapoyca. Villapoyca to Nikki Dangles on the give and go. In front, Benito. Chance there. Shoving it on front. And just trying to get that one past Sibelius. He holds that post strong. Yeah, and that's a great job from Sibelius. And Atrez really applying a lot of the pressure here in this first period. Not too many chances for Havu, but Atrez really hemming themselves in the offensive zone. So Havu going to have to try to get out because after a while, we've seen this plenty of times in the series, Atrez will score and capitalize to break this thing open. Spin move there by Flyer Kungen. Ended up with a pass that went behind the net for Atrez to pick up. We go offside here. Good to be here. Nice to have you there. It is game four. Atreds leading this best of seven series. Three games to nothing. 
Face off in the neutral zone. Cleanly won back. Nasu Steli has got it. Good move in. Keep it in the zone. Dominointi from the corner. He keeps it. Gonna get it over to Eagleson. He will in a weird way. Back up to Dominointi. Backhand chance. He scores. Dominointi circling around. And he finds his way into the middle of the ice. Gets that pass they were looking for. And they lead game four. One to nothing. And they circled around the positions as well, as we mentioned here before the game. Dominointi moving to center. Flower Kungen kicking out to right wing. Well, it worked out there for them right there. Dominointi, right place, right time. Gets that one to capitalize. And Havu draws the first goal of the game. And how big could that be for their comeback chance here to draw the first goal and get the scoring started one to nothing? This is their third time they've had the opening goal of the game. See what they can do about this lead. As that's what they were trying to do all game. Generate havoc behind the net. Get out front. Shoot. Score. They beat FaZe on the far side. Backhand chance from Dominointi. Giving Havu yet another lead in this series. Under a minute here. Final 10 seconds. We'll see what happens. Filipoika trying to disrupt this play out of the zone. They're trying to just bring it back and slow it down. They will do so. And will. So that's going to do it. Opening goal here from Dominointi, the centerman in game number four. Gets the opening goal and gives Havu a 1-0 lead down three games to nothing. You know, this is interesting, Nick, because this is the first time, despite having the opening goal in bo or excuse me, in three of the four games, they never ended the period with a lead all series long. So this is huge for Havu to maybe get this lead, get that feeling knowing that they go into the second period up, and if they can to get that second goal, that would be absolutely huge for them. They have to stop that response from HRS. Getting a second goal to double that lead could really, really help their chances if they try to not necessarily get all of it back. You can't get this whole three nothing deficit back here in one game or one period, but have to do it period by period, play by play. Going up one to nothing, entering the first period of game four of the league could really help their chances here and kind of be the first step to coming back here in the series. It starts with one. And if you're King Lime right now, you're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> and I know you called enough games with him to have heard that about 400 times already. We love it. Period number two underway here. H Reds down by one against Havu. Looking to keep their dreams alive here. This Caps Gaming Showcase presented to you by Lidos. Powered by LeagueGaming.com. Visit LeagueGaming.com today. Sign up. The virtual hockey career starts now at LeagueGaming.com. A couple of dances around there. And he took a few to the rodeo and couldn't get past that last one was Flyer Kungen. It's that chance was denied into the zone. Flyer Kugan's got it again in his end this time. And here comes the four check for H Reds. Three deep there, Brandon. That's a lot of heavy pressure. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're looking to do to continue to apply that pressure. They're so good when they can do that to be able to cause those turnovers, make you think a little bit, make that one mistake. We saw Atres capitalize on that for the goal earlier in game three. That was the game winning goal. They got that on, trying to do it here again here to try and get this thing tied up. Five gone so far here in the second period. Poke check there keeps it out of the zone. Nikki Dangles will spin and take it in. Leading that one over for Villapoika. Now Nikki Dangles behind the net. Chance in front. He tried to throw that on net. On the quick give and go slide out. But it did not connect. So Nasu Stelia will try his hand at this. Everybody stops and gets going. Got their feet under him. Flips it in. Low angle flip in. That one found its way to King of Apes. Haven't heard from him much in game four. But, or game three. But we did in game two. Good stop and go there by Havu. They look to find their way in. Still plenty of time left on the clock for both sides of the ice. As he takes a hit there. That's Billy Kuhn getting planted right in front of the H Reds bench. It's Domi now looking to carry this in. And Benito tried instead. But they were out of sync. 
A little bit of 98 degrees outside, and we go over to O-Town. That means O for offside. Yeah, and you can see that hit again, and man, that was a <laughs> jaw-rattling hit there, so to speak, as maybe some would say. Is That was Vili Kuhn maybe injured on that one. Something to look out for. He might stay back a little bit, or maybe you can see Flyer Kuhn can stay back to help him out a little bit. But keep that in mind, Villa Poika, a guy with a lot of speed there on that right side of Vili Kuhn, the left winger for HRS, could be something to look out for if he doesn't have that same agility or that same speed that he normally would that, with that build. As the right winger there in Flyer Kungen is a puck moving defenseman, so we'll see if that helps him out back there until he recovers from his injury, whenever that may be. Nasu Stelia, left side Eagles to try to step that one in. It was a good effort, fell just short. Ricky Dangles will take this one in. Villapoika, poke check free. Oh, they could have gotten that pass out early. Flyer Kungen with a bit of delay there, broken chance. And that was off the turnover again. a -treads really forcing some mistakes here on the ice right now. And that might have been a goal there, Nick, if they were able to capitalize on it. I don't think Sibelius would have been ready to go from one post to the other. It was a great play, just was not able to connect on that final pass there. Time winding down here in the second period. a -treads not a lot of shots this game so far. As that one's flipped in, looking to be picked up. Villapoika's got it. Trying to get past that right side, and Villapoik has been shut down so far. Trying to break through that defensive move. Havu now, two on three chance, and that's a good effort there. Fell to Eagles and got the shot on. Better save by FaZe and Co. As the defense helped him out there. Picked off by Vili Kuhn. Fighting for it with Villapoika. Benito behind the net. Trying to lift that one up and around. He's trying to flip that one in front. That was beautiful to see, but it didn't work. Love to see it, as you'd say. Domi, center point, slap shot in. And Sibelius able to see it the entire way. Under a minute gone, or a minute left here in the second period. Now that's a turnover. Villapoika able to keep that one in, but not for long. Final five seconds here. King of Apes along the boards, cleared out. And that's going to do it. So Havu Gaming with a 1-0 lead. A lead through two periods. Keeping their playoff hopes alive. They lead 1-0. And I think that's all you can ask for, Nick. A chance. Just a chance to keep your season going. To keep your championship hopes going. And Havu have that here going into the third period. A 1-0 lead. And you know, Nick, it's, it's interesting. You look at the scores here on the top left of your screen. And... We talked about it. Each game, despite the scoreline, has been close. Remember, it was tied 1-1 one one in Game 2 before that goal from King of Apes with about 26 seconds left. And then, obviously, the Nicky Dangles empty netter at the end of it to make it 3-1. to one. But each game, relatively close. But if you're H-Reds here in Game 4, you have to feel like you're going to break this thing open soon. You only allowed one shot under two minutes of time on attack yet. You find yourselves down one to nothing in this game. So a team that doesn't easily get frustrated, not going to change that here, but have to kind of wonder when they're going to break this thing open. So you've played well, just the chances not finding themselves go through the net here so far. We'll see that changes here. That third period of a chance for Hreds to win it all here in game four. Hreds does their hate for losing usurp their love for winning right now. They have 20 virtual minutes to do it. See if they can pull off the, the victory or if will Havu extend the playoff series. Benito on the turnover. Villapoika, Benito up front looking for uh, Nicky Dangles, but he was just out of position. He's going to go back and get it. Nicky Dangles drops that off to Domi. Good forecheck up by Havu. Benito just carving through that as Villapoika tried to stay on site with that animation. That lost him the opportunity to pick up the puck as Domi comes back to help him out. Nicky Dangles, left side. Good work off the puck there. And it's finally going to come out of the zone. No. Filipoika keeping it in. Fetting it over. In front chance. Traffic in front and Sibelius. I don't know how he tried to come up with that one, but he kept it out of the goal. The puck was flipping and flopping everywhere. He was able to somehow keep that one at bay. Four men back for A-Treads now with that one just fired on net and kind of just flinged at it. 
But FaZe able to hold on. And FaZe gonna have to stay sharp here, down one to nothing. Just trying to keep this thing at bay. And you feel like Atrus with the way they're playing, they can maybe break this thing open, get this to a tie game. But FaZe gonna have to stay sharp as Havu trying to push to get that second goal would be huge for them if they scored it. As a kneel down in the neutral zone breaks that play up, Dominointi. Now Flyer Kungen. Tight in front. That was a good effort, but it was poked away by the defense. Domi and King of Apes for H Reds. Well, Apoika just kind of golf clubs that one into the corner, and out comes with it is Havu. Halfway gone here in the third period. 1 0 Havu Gaming. Nasu Stelia from the point. Trying to feed that one up. Nikki Dangles now has a step. Lays it back for Villapoika, and he wasn't there for it. You got to think that might have been the move. Let's remember that one if this scoreline holds. Good shot in. Better block there by Benito. Swinging that one back for King of Apes. Now to Domi. Domi. He's got it up to Villapoika. Villapoika met there at the right line. And Brandon, that right side after the change has not worked for h -Reds. Yeah, you're Both so oh, and the goal. Billy Coog after taking the injury. A beauty of a pass to the slot area. And his second goal of the playoffs makes this 2-0. And could that right there, that sequence in the last five minutes, could that be what gets Havu back in the series? You said it earlier, Nick. We're going to bookmark it and remember it right here. The... the this read or the disconnection between Villa Poica and Nikki Dangles on that drop pass attempt that didn't work. It turned into a turnover. Atrez never saw another chance. They got shut down on that right side of the ice, turned into a turnover, and Havu turned it into a goal with Billy Kuhn. That is absolutely huge, and Havu may just be back into this series here if they can hold on. Another errant pass there by Villa Poica, and you're absolutely right. That could be the turning point, for lack of a better team name pun. Under five, about five left here in the third period. And can H Reds adjust or will Havu hold on? Offside here, 4.32 to go. And that is a huge goal for Havu. They've yet to score more than one goal in any of the games that they've played in. But they do so right here and with 4.32 to go, you have to like the chances. Just have to play mistake free. Keep everything in front of you and not let HRS get anything easy. Offside again. This one, as you mentioned in game three, favors Havu in game four all these stoppages. Yeah, and I think they're completely fine with letting h -Reds go off sides. Just let that clock do its thing. Tick down. It's your friend. You're up by two. Just have to not let h -Reds do anything to give themselves back into this game. And if you let that clock wipe down, you don't have to score again. You're up by two. Just have to let this thing go. Apparently, if you draw a penalty, it doesn't bode well for you if you're Havu. They did not draw any power plays in this game, and they're up by two. Good hit there. Puck doesn't stay in the zone, though, as it bounced out. And Now, as I say that, H Reds draws a penalty and goes on the power play with 2.18 to play in the third. We said play mistake-free, and that right there is definitely not that. As an unfortunate penalty there for Havu to take, and now H Reds with a chance on the power play to maybe creep back into this thing. We've seen them do this before. They can score two goals in two minutes, Nick, and... Boy, oh boy, Havu, they're going to hope to avoid that. So a big PK, Sibelius and company going to have to be sharp. Good slap shot, but it doesn't find its way to target. Bounced off the boards, held up against the backboard now. Nicky Dangles, one-time chance over to King of Apes. No, wait, it was tipped. Tipped by the centerman. That's Benito, and it's 2-1. to one. They're cutting into the lead. And don't look now, Nick, but here comes h -Reds, and I'd love to get another look at that, but it looked like there was a trip after the pass right here. Oh, never mind, it was just a hit, so it will still be five on five, but Atres, they score quick on the power play. They have two minutes of even strength to get back into this thing, so Havu still gonna have to stay on their toes with the one goal lead. Atres, they put themselves in a position to maybe come back here. Let's see what they do. So 20 seconds it took, and now we're in the final minute. Real time 60 to conclude. Atres down by one. Can Havu extend their playoffs? Good pass over. Villapoika takes that in. Benito now. In deep. Sent in front. Chance. Nikki Dangles tripped up, maybe. Just a face-off here. Sibelius will take it to his right. 
Here we go, Nick. 44.7. Can H Reds find something to tie this up here? Let's see. Face off one. King of Apes looking for the tip there from Nikki Dangles. King of Apes again, controlling from the back. Domi, King of Apes, give and go. Nikki Dangles down low. Pulling up. Rebound chance. He scores! Villa Poika has tied the game at two. Wow. We said it. We'll say it again. You cannot let Apes Reds get back into a game because they can do things like they have done. What was the mark we said, Nick? 218 left when they had that power play. You cannot make mistakes against this Apes Reds team. They will capitalize. They will take advantage. And from 2 nothing down to a 2-2 game and potentially overtime, what a comeback from Apes Reds. What are we watching? Unreal. 2-2 two two with under 30 seconds to go. Nikki Dangles from the corner. Here comes Havu Gaming, though. Plenty of time left to see something happen. What will? Billy Coon from the corner. Looking to just get it out of the zone here. Nikki Dangles. Benito. Chance here. King of Apes. Can't fire it on. Block there. And a penalty. Eight reds to the power play. Oh, man, and I think Havu, they're just going to want to try to take this 3.7 down and take a deep breath. This has been a disastrous two and a half minutes here. <laughs> Ever since they were up two to nothing, Atriad's going to pull phase. This is enough time to get one play off if they win this face off cleanly. Let's see what look they get, but wow, what a turn in this game. Six on four, one into the corner. Nasu Stelia just looking to kill the time, and they will. And we are, for the first time in this series, Going to overtime, the comeback kid, Villa Poika, taking H Reds into OT in game four. It, these guys just don't go down. I mean, it doesn't matter the score, the time. 218 left. They're on the power play. They're down two to nothing. And, you know, you figured if they get the power play goal, they have a chance, but <laughs> you wouldn't have thought they would have scored two in a minute and 30 seconds. I mean, <laughs> absolutely unreal and if you're Havu you're just glad to get that last two minutes over with and go into this overtime it's important imperative for you to forget everything that happened the last few minutes and focus on this OT your season and your championship hopes are on the line so have to stay focused on the task at hand and try to find a way to win this game this next goal determines if H Reds will win the championship or Will Havu Gaming extend this at least one more game? We will have a winner. This is Overtime Hockey. Twitch.tv slash Capitals. It's good to be here. Nice to have you there in for this amazing sequence of events we just witnessed late in the third period. Havu on the power play here to start overtime. King of Apes. In down low. And that was Dominointi taking a little bit of a bump there. That's Havu shorthanded for another 45 seconds. In for Benito. Benito. Villapoika. Down low. He's going to get that up to King of Apes. He will. Doimi. Center point. Nikki Dangles. That was blocked and it trickled out to the slot area but cleared out by Havu. Brought back in by King of Apes though. Five left on the power play. Chance in front. And he scores! Havu Gaming goes down in four. H Reds sweeps this and becomes the inaugural Caps Gaming EU Division Champions. Who else, Nick? Who else? Nikki Dangles. Wow. We said it in the open. It feels like whenever this team needs a big play in a big moment, Nikki Dangles answers the call. He doesn't hear the comeback completing game four. H-Reds are your Caps Gaming Showcase European champions. What a comeback from the boys in red. A 2-0 down, 3-2 victory comeback from H-Reds to win the series. Four to nothing. What did we just witness? Oh. Unreal. My goodness. Three unanswered goals. One from each of the forwards for H-Reds. Wow.
and Nikki Dangles with two assists, King of Apes, an assist on every single one of them on the back end. Who else? Wow. Who else? I'm stunned. <laughs> How about that? And keep in mind, that goal was about two minutes into overtime, so every single goal in about in-game, a five-minute sequence. What a comeback from h Reds from 2-0 down to winning this win in 3-2 and taking the series. And you have to feel for Havu, who, when they took that penalty with 218, you're thinking, like, well, that's okay. Just don't let them get past us. We have the lead. We're up two. Just have to hold on for a couple of minutes. And just everything turned the other way for them. It felt like after that power play goal and... If you question it before, you won't question it now. You never give HRS the slightest of chances to get back into a game because that right there is what can happen if you do. What a comeback there. What a way to end the Caps Gaming Showcase. HRS are your champions and they do it in dramatic style in a sweep that was more dramatic than what it may seem here on the scoreline here on your top left. But wow. I don't have words. I, I'm smiling and laughing because I am stunned from what I just witnessed, having been having the privilege to call dozens and dozens of H Reds games over a handful of their series everywhere. I I don't know how many goals you need to get to make sure they can't come back, but the answer is not two. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I I was like, okay. I was talking right before we that power play happened with 218 left in the third, Brandon. And I said, you know, for Havu, they have the lead. They did not go on the power play in game three or in game four, excuse me. Maybe that's their benefit. The fact that they have a five on five yeah. game that they're playing. And then they take a penalty which is the opposite of what I was saying, but apparently that also can't happen against H-Reds. Well, Nick, it's interesting because I was saying right before they scored that power play goal, there's two things that you need to do if you're Havu to close this out. Keep everything in front of you and don't make mistakes. If you give H-Reds those little chances, they will capitalize. They will take advantage. And to take that penalty in that time is one thing, but to give them that clear-cut look just, what was it, 10 to 15 seconds into that power play, you give them a whole two minutes to find an even-strength goal. That's plenty able for HRS. That's plenty within their ability to do. When they scored that power play goal, you just kind of had a feeling like they can do this with two minutes left, and not even a full minute later, they came back down the other end and did it again. And then they go into overtime, and two minutes in, Nikki Dangles on what was another power play scores the game winner and clinches the series is just it goes to show you it doesn't matter how much you were up by if you give h reds a glimmer of hope they will snatch every inch of hope that you had before then and they'll have the glory of it all in the end and in this case it's a game four win it's a sweep and it is the first caps gaming showcase championship here in europe what a way to end this tournament and what a way for Atres to win it. Wow. What a way. And you said this in a previous broadcast. Atres said they hate losing more than they like winning. Yeah. The King of Apes has literally been on the phone with us and said, who's next? You've said <laughs> best team in the world, Atres. I, I mean, it's hard not to debate it right now. You're right. I mean... They've won basically every championship there is to win. They've beaten every team in that championship stage just about that there is to beat. I mean, this is why I really hope that a North American and a European tournament comes together because there's so many talented teams on both sides to see the H-Reds and the Havus and the Forlundas go up against the, the Scary Hours and the oh, Isles GTs yeah. and the Olympias. <laughs> we need this to happen, and this is why, because... H-Reds, they have done just about everything now there is to do with EU. And to win this the way they did, just amazing. And what a game, what a series, what a way to cap off the Caps Gaming Showcase. And I don't think you could have written an ending wilder than what we just saw. That was wow, just wow. <laughs> At 218, if there was a sports book for this game, 
it would have been 97% favoring Havu Gaming yeah. to at least go to five games and then get a shot. And with the way they were playing on the blue line, on the right side, I gave them the benefit that they could pull this off, that they could at least get to a game six because they were playing lights out on that right side of the ice. Villa Poika was unable to really get anything going in game number four, and they found a way, and they did it again. And if I'm going to take a page out of Baby Keem and Kendrick Lamar, and they did it again and did it again and did it again, and here we are. Now they've won a championship in all the places possible to win championships. What else can you say for H Reds? Yeah, and you know, it's one of those things, and I, I do want to take some time to give some credit to Havu. Absolutely. Because for 58 minutes, they shut H Reds down. Let's not let that last sequence yeah. forget about what Havu did, not just in the series, but to get to this point. I mentioned it a little earlier, but remember. In the quarterfinals, they were 13 seconds away from being done. Yep, Yvaskala yeah. almost pulled off the upset. They found a way to tie that game in game four, win it in overtime, and then win another one goal game in game five to get here, and then swept for Lunda. So they could have easily be in the series and playing one more game. Game three was decided by a goal, game four was decided by a goal, game two was a two goal game, but remember the empty netter from Nikki Dangles. King of Apes had the game winner with just about 30 seconds left. Things could easily be two to two. Havu played a good series, just H Reds able to find that little bit more when they needed to, at the times they needed to, and how fitting that they do it in overtime. Down two to nothing. They come back on the stick of Nikki Dangles. They win it. Wow. Absolutely wow. And what else is there to say? I mean, we'll put a capstone on that here. And your champions, your inaugural champions for the EU division, Hreds and Nikki Dangles and FaZe and King of Apes and Benito and Villa Poika and Delmi and all those guys well deserve the victory they had. My kudos, my respect and my admiration for not only Havu Gaming uh, and for Lunda, but every team that stepped up for the EU. Uh, and that's going to do it for us here for the Caps Gaming Showcase Season 3. CM Punk gifts all around, Brandon. Uh, but we got to make sure we get some thank yous in. First and foremost, we want to make sure we thank our presenting sponsor in Lidos. Without them, we could not do this. Lidos right here on my shirt, everywhere you saw it. We want to make sure we thank our partners over at uh, Caps Gaming, of course, the, the showcase partners. want to thank MSE and the Washington Capitals organization for being an outstanding, perfect grade a class of people to work with i've not worked with uh, better people in this industry than the team over at caps gaming they're outstandingly professional in what they do uh, and always we want to thank as well leaguegaming.com for allowing us to have this platform to present this uh broadcast to you present this tournament to you in the best way that we could do that and we appreciate everybody doing that as well and then lastly on our side we want to thank dudley do right and king lime and of course we want to thank you, Brandon, who has stepped up in a major way over the last year and a half, starting with our uh, coverage uh, with Caps Gaming in Season 2. Uh, all the way to now, we've come such a long way to be able to do this, and it's really just blown up. And uh, I personally want to thank all of our viewers, all of our fans, and all the people that push forward the NHL esports space in a positive way. It's not about... Uh, taking down uh, the one side or taking talking smack about the three side or the six side. We need all the verticals to work together to really lift this space up. And it does not happen when everybody's trying to tear everybody down. It literally will not happen. So uh, we have to work together to make this more seen, more visible, and to continue to do more things that expand who watches our product to allow us to continue to do these great broadcasts. So that is going to do it for us for the Caps Gaming Showcase. However, we have other three challenges to talk about. We'll, we did already, and we'll see you guys over there, right here on twitch.tv slash Caps for those events next week and the week after. And good luck to everybody in the NHL GWC. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. We know those guys over there are going to do an amazing job as well, and good luck in every other tournament. So on behalf of everybody here on the team, on behalf of all the people I mentioned, thank you so much. My name is F5 Penguin, Nick DeMeo. You can find me all over there at F5 Penguin. That is B Major, one of the best analysts in the business. This is the
Caps Game and Showcase. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. And we will see you guys next time. Hey, Trent, you're defending champions now, the newly champions, inaugural champions for the Caps Gaming Showcase in Season 3, winning their tournament and this series four games to nothing. Good night.